it is finally time to ask you guys for more support. If we could get 420 likes on this video, Rice and Mutts are going to combine their bank and just spread it out to the masses, dude. All right, we're not going to get any. All of you guys are going to be wealthy. So if we get 420 likes, Rakes, anything to add? Um, yeah, dude. I do you know what I did notice actually that I went into your stream the other day, Mint, and I tried to uh, win a bulwark with your channel points, and it what? said that it was disabled. <laughs> so I think it's only <laughs> fair that you give away one of your bulwarks, mate. On top of that, <laughs> if people want it. <laughs> They will get it. I will give away one bulwark. Rakesy can pick who wins it. I will give it to Rakesy and he will do all the work. That's the real like. <laughs> <laughs> like the video, boys. Welcome to the Old School RuneScape podcast. I am Mitt Mad Cow. What's going on, boys? Rakesy as always. And hello, it's me, Rice Cup. Today, I want to introduce to you guys Mr. Mutz, one of the best hardcore Ironmen and most long term veteran hardcore Ironman players that I know. Um, but yeah, welcome, Mr. Mutz. How, how are you doing today? Thank you, thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm yeah, doing pretty no good. Problem. I'm pretty good today. Yo, how long have you had your hardcore for? Ooh, the current one? or <laughs> Which yeah, one? Tell, tell Which us. One? What, what, what's we the situation? Go... Yeah, we should go to the history. Tell <laughs> the us about history. the history. I've, of had the a, I've had a couple. <laughs> a couple? So you like Alfie pretty much. You have to well, restart Well, Alfie Jr., yeah. Not, yeah not, Alfie not that Jr. bad yet, no. <laughs> No, I think I'm on like number eight currently. So yeah. I've, I've had quite a few, but uh, a lot of them have your, lived pretty long. Do you know you're paying for like all of Jagex treasury from all the new accounts you made, dude? Like they're they're just waiting for you to die again so they can pay off the, the rest of their JMods, dude. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. I must oh, have uh, injected quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, but the, current, the current one has a playtime of 245 days. And I think it's like, it's a bit of a weird one because I already had this account before my previous one died. Um, it was a, a backup account at first, so it's actually like probably like three years old, four years old. I want to say. Damn. Wow, that's a long time. So do you, you, um, you go really back. quickly before we jump on to another subject? Those eight accounts. Do you remember like the playtime, the deaths, like a quick summary of each one if your memory <laughs> so is you updated? I was gonna ask. Yeah. yeah. Wow, well, my, my my first hardcore actually. Died to a um, Raleka Market Guard. This was like before I streamed. So that's the first, that's the only hardcore that I have not streamed. The beta test. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was in a blue scroll and uh, I thought I could AFK kill one while I was getting a coffee and then I came back in Lumbridge. So, like, ah, well, I guess they're stronger than I thought they were. <laughs> um, but yeah, the second one got pretty far uh, at the time. It was like one of the top hardcores, probably. Um, what year was this? Oh man, oh, what year is this? I started streaming four and a half years ago or something. So it's probably, yeah, so probably around that one, time, I guess. On average, one hardcore every half a year. Damn, on average, right? yeah. <laughs> like that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Popping out averages. I mean, it's a pretty long time for a hardcore to live, I'd say, if like take an average. Yeah, yeah con considering you're very ballsy, you, you go balls deep on the bossing. Like, you'll literally go to wilderness and do all that kind of stuff, too. You don't, yeah, you yeah, don't yeah, shy yeah. away from it. He's insane. So, yeah. I mean, you pl I, I feel like, I feel like you play the game. Yeah, you play the game properly, right? It's like you actually do all of the hard stuff, and that's, that's very respectable. So, oh, uh, yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty much. Well, let's, those... let's hear the accounts, though. I want to, I want to hear oh, the yeah, list. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I want to. I want to know how you died. <laughs> I like how they died. Okay. Yeah, yeah let's Wait, hear. Uh, yeah, I have a command for this in my own chat, so I'm gonna do that real quick so I am to get one. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally There's... exclamation mark deaths. Uh, okay. Too many. <laughs> uh, the first one, uh, Releka Market Guard. The second one, Armadillo Minions. Hmm. I, I killed the boss and I died. Oh, that's the minions. famous clip. Oh, that's yeah. yeah I missed the flick and I got hit twenty-one fifteen comboed. <laughs> like it was pretty brutal. Like yeah, that's very rough. unlucky, but. The famous clip. Yeah. Famous clip. Uh, then I DC'd at TOB on the next one. That got, got very far and very quick. That was like kind of when I got like very known. So the the death at, at the Armored Minions, that kind of that clip kind of blew up and everyone um, shared it around. Everyone knew me as like, oh, the guy that died to Armored Minions. And then the combination of that with the fast progression of the next hardcore, which was nuts, mutts. Um, I got to TBs pretty quickly at the time, at least. I was like the first, like actual, like rushed account that kind of did everything still along the way, but I got there so quickly. 
Uh, I got a scythe in that account as well. Um, ended up DCing, sadly. It's the only DC death I've had, though, so it's pretty fortunate. Uh, then I died the next day to a guard dog on New Hardcore. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, then I died to a Galvag bomb on DS2. Oh. I got uh, I got the sad combo with the waves into uh, the oh, fireball. And I, yeah. I should have teleported a lot faster, but I didn't. Got a bit cocky. Um, yeah. Then I died to a ham member. <laughs> Pickpocketing, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that clip is probably the most funny thing I've, uh, I've ever seen. Um, Vorkath, I misclicked my uh, my prey orb and clicked Vorkath instead, so it's still in the asset phase. Uh, and then the last one is for Sai's Nightmare. That account had a, an Ellie, had a Twisted Bow. Holy shit. One of the, probably one of the stacked hardcores who have died. What happens yeah. to these accounts? Are they just sitting there? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, the, the lower level ones, like the ones that I do, like Galvac and stuff, I just de-ironed them and like liquidated the banks. Um, the like higher level ones, like the one that DC the TOB and the uh, one for Sony, those are just still regular Iron Man. I think they're like, I don't play them much, but they're like kind of like trophy accounts to me. Like I, I, I like what I've achieved in those accounts and it's kind of like it's still there like I can, I can still like show the account if I want to or I think it's still like it's still like a trophy to me like I want it to be there I don't want to just delete it I guess yeah. <clears throat> that's really cool so four of those were basically very high level and the other four were kind of like oh the dead the next day you know yeah yeah exactly <laughs> it's like, like the alternating pattern I never even noticed that yeah. I, was like, I was like oh wow okay that's a Price great way trying to, to find it. all the patterns out here. <laughs> I, <was cool. laughs> yeah, I, I think it's interesting because I was like, wait, you died eight times, but I only know like four of your accounts. But it makes sense because yeah, yeah. four of those died like the first week or something. Yeah, exactly. So like, okay. So, I mean, that sounds sounds like you've had a pretty good time of it. Like you, By the sounds of it, you've mm -hmm. only had one death that's out of your control, which I think for yeah. most hardcore Iron Man, that's like really good going. Because like from what I've heard mm -hmm. from watching other people play, like the worst thing about hardcore iron man is when you die to like the servers or or, or some kind of external issue which is just out of your control yeah. like and th like i think um boaties like more or less completely stepped down from doing hardcores because he died to dc so many times right oh yeah for sure yeah i can get definitely get that which is kind of nuts so i guess like my question to you is like when you spent like i mean the account that had the tebow and the ellie you probably had like hundreds of days played like if not like yeah. possibly even a thousand or plus like where do you hours right how long do you take between dying on an account like that and then making a fresh new one how how long does that usually take you um usually it's like the next day but that that one specifically the one with like the, the alien the tebow that one hit me pretty hard um because i was kind of like considering like can I beat this? Like, that's kind of what it's all about, right? For me, like, beating the previous account that I've had, making it a better account, even. And I kind of was like, I don't know if it's possible if I can beat this account. So it took me like a week, I think. I played regular Iron Man for a little bit, I think. I'm not entirely sure. Or I, or I said I would, but I didn't really do it. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's kind of like an addiction to hardcore mode. It's like, uh, it doesn't feel the same. Uh, when you play an Iron Man coming from hardcore, it's like, you need that risk, you know, you need that adrenaline of like, oh, I, I need to perform. I cannot just, you play a regular Iron Man. It's like, it doesn't really matter if you die. You know, there's not really any consequences. And yeah, that's kind of what I miss when I, when I play the games, like I need there to be a consequence when I like die, I need to be punished. I hey, just man, had, you, you lose 250k when you die. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I just had like yeah, such, I, I, I had, I just, sorry, real quick. I just had like a genius idea. If Jagex were to do this, I think it would actually be so cool. Like, do you know if you get like a jar, like a, a jar mm. of darkness, for example, you put it into your house and you get to see the boss and there's like a layout and stuff. Imagine if there was a way to link all of your hardcore accounts and then <laughs> you could like put your dead hardcore in your house as like an ex yeah. exhibition and you could you like yeah. put whatever gear on it see that the, the account had, see the banks, Damn. see the stats, playtime. <laughs> like that would actually be so cool. And then you just have, that you could just cool. could have like a museum hall. Like just filled yeah. with like your dead accounts on it every side. That'd be yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of sick. Like kind of coming back on my to my trophy uh, argument. Like I, yeah. I kind of want to keep the account because it's like a yeah, trophy. It's kind of like similar like to that. Yeah. The idea of hardcore prestige. You know, like mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like here's your next life. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That would actually mm. be really sick. I imagine... That'd be really cool. Oh, man. How many... So, you've done eight different hardcores. Currently, the account that you have, you... Yeah. I'm, like, tell us a little bit about the account you have right now, because I think you're you're rank one in TOA, right? Is that correct? Uh, Yeah, that's right. I'm rank one in TOA right now. I you think really I'm are addicted watching. to Risk, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's kind of how I play my accounts. Like, uh, so... People ask me like, "Oh, when are you maxing and stuff like that?" Like a lot. I kind of, I'm actually like properly working on maxing this time around. But um, I always like the idea of first getting the dangerous stuff done, so I then I can work on the account itself without the risk still being there. Of oh, I still have to do this kind of boss, and it's kind of dangerous. I could lose my status there. It'd be smarter, especially um, if you could lose your status there, to do that first and then do the skilling. You then have a maxed hardcore account with all these sick items. And it's kind of a nicer idea that I've the, the PVM done. Uh, so I know I probably won't lose my status. Then the other way around, I think, because then you max the account and then you end up dying. And it's like, oh, I don't really want to play the account anymore. <laughs> it's like, yeah. 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 It's, uh, so yeah, I'm currently rank one TOA expert mode. I am, I used to be rank one normal mode, but then I got past and I couldn't really play that much. And I was like, ah, oh, you know what? <laughs> I'll just go for expert rank one, I guess. But um, <laughs> I'm pretty, I think if I combine my KCs, I'm still like rank one for both um, combined as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure my rank one, like my TOA expert KC is higher than rank one normal mode. Really? Pretty weird. Yeah. Wait, how many KCs? I'm through it in uh, 362. Okay. So yeah, I uh, recently got the shadow actually. So it's Ooh, not really gone up great. since uh, oh, a week or that, something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's even like I think it was like after um, the rice cup asked me to ask me to get on the the podcast as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was like around the same week or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think so. <laughs> I think I actually yeah, saw very that. very same. <clears throat> I think I saw mm. it on one of the highlight channels, and I was like, finally, man. Like <laughs> I, I knew I knew there was gonna be some kind of crazy like grind mindset you had. Especially after how many light bearer rings did you get in a row? <laughs> Tell us about that. Twelve in a row, yeah. That was fucking oh, insane, in dude. <laughs> like how that like, how that didn't just like break you. I genuinely <laughs> I would have been broken. Well I would have been broken. I don't get I, it. Actually, when I broke the dry streak uh... with a bang, I believe. Uh well, the dry streak, the, I guess the streak, the streak of rings. So my 13th purple from expert mode. So the first 12 purples from expert, I only received <laughs> rings. So you don't have <laughs> that was kind of crazy. But then I got the fang and it kind of was like the, very demotivating after I got the fang because at least I was like, oh, can it be ring number 13? You know, like yeah, yeah. there was this, it's kind of weird how you kind of don't mind it being another ring because it's kind of like, it's kind of turned into a meme at this point, right? Um. Yeah. So it's like, how far can I push it? How how many more can I get? It's kind of turning into like a kind of game for me. It's like, oh, and it would be funny if I got another one, even though I wouldn't want one. Uh, so it kind of killed the vibe when I got a fang. It's like, oh, well, now there's nothing exciting going on anymore. Like, <laughs> it's just, a, it's just a bad item. Now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think anyone's going to, yeah. I don't know. Someone might beat it one day, but like, do, do you have an idea of what the previous, like most back-to-back -back, uh, rings was? Is that even no, a thing? Is it no tallied up? I think the highest I've heard is like five, maybe. Like five, yeah. It is so it's so like we did the maps. It's it's a one in two point six million to get a ring on uh, that to get twelve rings on twelve purples. So like Jesus. That's that crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. so awful. It is so bad. It is so bad. That is yeah, bad. It probably won't happen to anyone like ever. No, yeah. that's that's like so rough, man. I remember I remember doing uh, 300 solo raids in chambers, and I got free back to back in 300 KC, like basically 100 KC apart. I got free fucking bulwarks back to back. Yeah. Like, all <laughs> that, that, of... that, that broke me, man. Like, I was like, I just wasn't in a good place, man. <laughs> like, it was did, you, did you keep the bulwarks or did you sell them? I think I, I, fuck, I probably sold them. Like, they were like oh, nine more at the time. That? Supply in the world. You're selling them the gold farmers, bro. What are you doing over there? Yeah. I gotta go fight these no, people. It all works out here. Dude. Yes. So like, mint, bro. That is Have rough, fun. dude. I, I mean, oh my god, I knew you were gonna have some crazy like grind mindset. And hearing that you had eight hardcore Iron Man before this one, I'm not surprised. <laughs> what adds up? What keeps you going, Mutz? I mean, is it the risk? Is it the adrenaline? Uh, High scores? 
I don't really care about high scores. High scores kind of can just come with it because it's new content and that's kind of like very, very cool, I guess. I can have like rank one in my title and it kind of gets people into stream. I'm not going to lie, but it's not like I play for ranks. Not really. I just play for like the gear upgrades and what keeps me going is I think the, the route of my account. So I have things like planned out. Like I want to get full tour or something. Um, I want to get one of the big things currently. I want to get the Grandmaster common achievements done, um, for which I want gear upgrades and, uh, I kind of like to plan out my route for the account. So, for example, if I want to get a Twisted Bow, I preferably want to do that grind with a Shadow. So, um, so like, it's, it'll feel different to me because um, I've done the Chambers grind, like, so many times and I've done so many over all my accounts and it's kind of going to switch it up a bit, make it a bit different. So I had this idea, okay, I'll just grind TOA until I get a Shadow. Um, so, therefore, I can grind Chambers with this Shadow and it'll feel like new, you know, it feels, it feels refreshing. Uh, I'll be doing the content that I've done so many times, but way different because I have to learn new methods and it's going to be completely different to what I'm used to. Um, so like setting myself that goal, like, okay, I want to get a shadow before I go to chambers to get a twisted bow. Um, I'm just going to get it and I'm not stopping until I get it. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's kind of how I, how I go about things. I want to so be, like, I want to have my route be as efficient as possible. Yeah. You just see something, you run for it. Uh, and, yeah. and honestly, I mean, I feel like this game's perfect for you and a lot of people just because <laughs> we take for granted how diverse RuneScape is. You know, like how you can route low-level, med-level, high-level content. It's also routable. You can kind of do that in other MMOs, but man, you yeah, just have definitely. so many options in RuneScape to do everything. And that's probably yeah. why these series that we all make have views, just because it's so <laughs> damn entertaining. Like, I don't know. It's it's cool how RuneScape just lets you create your own content like that, and then you get mud over here with six accounts, dumpster, and high end content. Uh, also, hardcore Iron Man wise, you're probably pretty tight knit with the community. I imagine. Is there any like funny deaths you would care to show us from like the community of hardcores? Like anything that's you've heard that's just weird or unique or hilarious? Um. So like not my own like hardcore devs. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah. Any, could be, could be yours too. Could be yours. Because I know well. that community's tight knit. You know? Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Um, I wouldn't know if anyone anyone stands. I I think when I think about hardcore devs, I think about Blind Start. He is uh he doesn't stream or anything, but I know he's on like uh, account number twenty one or something. Oh, like it's crazy. Oh, wow. <laughs> when oh, I think about hardcore devs, I think about him because he's done it so many times, and like he's actually had like proper accounts as well. Like he has a shadow now as well, currently on his hardcore. Uh, I think it's just funny. Like he's done it so many times, and he just keeps going anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I think that's really cool. Oh, he's I had remember, some funny deaths. I, I think he died to a cow or something once. <laughs> I, don't know, well I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, I remember a few. I remember a few. I remember Alfie's uh, death to Iron Dragons. That was funny as fuck. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did he feel like an anti-fire? Oh, yeah, he was yeah. going through catacombs to Abyssal <laughs> Demons or something. Ah, ah, and this yeah. guy just didn't have anti-fire shield. So so there was like that famous clip where he was like, no, yeah. like with his voice, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> it's funny because every time he dies, he says the same thing. So someone oh. someone looped oh, yeah. different clips of him dying. <laughs> well, was it like he a says? Constant, no. Oh, the no. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, Wasn't his next good, account yeah. name like Anti Fire Shield or yeah, some shit? Like <laughs> Yo, also, no. uh, for uh, the community that's watching, if you know any good hardcore uh, Iron Man deaths, God. type them down below. I think we'll all have a laugh. Uh, I have one to share. Um, it was right when it came out. Everyone was rushing Winter Todd, or whatever <clears> you call it. This guy got. 99 fire making 10 HP. I don't know if you guys saw this. It was pretty popular at the time. And he goes so. out to Al Karid without any um, uh, water oh, skin. Oh, and he takes the carpet. Oh, and yeah. by the time <laughs> he gets to the end of the carpet, oh, yeah. he gets hit by two uh, <laughs> desert things and dies for 10 HP because he had no water. And I was just <laughs> eyes from thirst. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, hydrated, I, I remember one as well from like the start. I think someone had like a bee random event, like a beekeeper random event. And oh, yeah. They filled it and they were out of run energy because of it. And 
they, they died <laughs> to a bat because they like got spawned like uh it's like, <laughs> like yeah. northwest of Sears no. village there's like a bat there and, and cold he just spawned yeah. next to the bat and he just the bat just killed him he didn't couldn't have <laughs> run away because he had no running engine oh that's so, so funny, troll yeah. dude he i spawned think next to the cold coach uh, um, i don't know if you have one but real yeah. quick i just i gotta throw it in the beekeeper random event on the first dev mode took my boy keepers out he did it <laughs> And he was at like Sears Village and he did it and he failed it and it teleported him to White Wolf Mountain. And at the time, <laughs> oh, no. that was the breeding ground for clans because oh, they would run into cattle yeah. and hit the fish. Yeah, yeah, and he just yeah. right into the plane <laughs> on Dead Man Mode and got yeah. whomped. Oh I my think, God. Oh, I think don't the one, boy fuse. I think the one that yeah, stands on. out for me the most is the. Uh, the boaty one where he died at corp when he like stood uh, up from his computer the phantom click yeah. yeah and like you know, he did like a spasm click when he was <laughs> going to the toilet oh my god what, what was it again it. yeah how did he how did it happen i can't bro, remember bro, it was so like he like, slammed like, his mask I believe, yeah it was something then, like yeah, that i think i think i remember so like you know how you know how you before you get off you know get off to to the restroom you hold your mouse right i mm. mean what happened was he like held on to his mouse last when he got up and then he accidentally pressed pressed the mouse. And the problem is the mouse was on the entrance. So when you pressed it, it, it pressed enter. So oh, then he dude. just literally <laughs> like an entered as he one take to the bathroom. Oh my god. That's and then such he came a, back, he was that's yeah. such a bad so way bad. to die. Like oh I my know, dude. I, I'm pretty sure if I remember rightly, so after he died there to the cave entrance, he uh I think he quit for a, I think he had like a six month break or something. Like he yeah, actually he went he missing for a while. Like that he was good. He done, bro. And like you can't blame him. I remember watching think, the whole thing. I was like, man, if that was me, yeah, I don't even know if I'd be able to come back. I, like, I think that was his uh, that was best hardcore. Uh, yeah, I think that was his like best hardcore at the yeah. time. It was pretty stacked. That I that is had, had, like the thing stuff. is like at the end of the day, it's like if you die to your own stupidity, <laughs> it's not that bad. But like it was sad because he obviously like you know he got mm. up, went to the bathroom or whatever it was comes back in like a good cheerful mood and then you can just see his demeanor <laughs> change as he notices yeah. that he's not where he's supposed to be and it was like <laughs> <laughs> and then the man like, just disappeared just for a few myself. months he just he just, Dude, he just out. Myself, like... I, I, my boy canoob i don't know if you guys know he oh yeah care, and he had yeah. a hardcore and he was going hard and he would do kbd a lot and finally after a while he got taken at it i think it was kbd or somewhere in the wild and i swear that man has not played the game since yeah. he was a like a full time content creator. Yeah, he was. Um, yeah. Yo, Mutt, do you know any like wilderness hardcore Iron Man deaths as as well? Since we're on the Ooh. subject, anyone yeah, got he's next? Um, like yeah. I don't know about any deaths like that actually happened there, but I know a lot of like there's like a bunch of worldly hardcores out there actually that are like doing a lot of wilderness stuff and like the revenants spider guy, and right? I to kill, yeah. yeah. Um. I don't know, like I don't know how they do it, man. Like I've done my fair share of wilderness stuff, but. Like doing it all the time, like I feel like it'd be so risky. Like people just catch on to like your, like, I guess, yeah, your habits. Like when yeah. when you're playing, like your habits. Yeah, I guess like when do you log on? When you go to like certain places, like people will eventually like get on it and actually like camp for you or something. I feel like that's why I'm always scared of. Like I always do my like sessions in like time apart, like so it doesn't become thing where people are just like, like oh i think if he might be in the wilderness again like i bring a lot of stuff in the wilderness like i'm, I have, I'm risking so much because i don't care if i lose my shit i just want to keep my status right <laughs> so yeah I mean, spe speaking of that a big update that they I, i'm i'm like 99 percent sure it passed the poll is they've pretty much removed every reason for an iron man to go into the wilderness minus having to go there for the best in slot mage cape because they've actually moved the dragon pickaxe to cow fight queen i believe is that correct or they're was going to be moving or it? are they it passed it passed in the pvp I think it's, poll i think it's not updated yet but yeah it yeah will yeah. be in, so right? it, it's yeah. kind of like that's actually like huge for iron man because it's like if you're an iron man and you hate the wilderness which is you know that's fine it's up to you at the end of the day like you can get yourself mage arena 2 the imbued mage cape done like in a few days mm -hmm. of account creation like it's not it's not exactly like a huge time sink to get that and then if that's the only thing you really need to be there for like you can just do that if you survive continue and if you die just reset it's not a biggie but i yeah. i think i think that's actually quite a nice update for people potentially playing hardcores in the future tom have Probably. you ever uh, attacked a hardcore in the wild um <laughs> bro <laughs> no, I, think somebody can. I, I i'll tell you this right so <clears throat> before killing iron man was cool 
because it is cool it now. If you no, kill, if you story. kill a fucking <laughs> hardcore no, Iron Man, story. if you kill hardcore Iron Man, it's like Keep instant, it <laughs> instant thousand likes on Twitter. Everybody loves you. It's a good time. So be <laughs> before this was like the philosophy that we had and the approach in the community. This was this was years ago. Like we're we're talking. Fuck, I don't even know how long. Like probably almost at the beginning when Iron Man first came out. I killed a regular Iron Man at Chaos Alley who just got the pet. Okay? <laughs> and I, dude, to Powerful this person. day, to this day, I still get people, this was like five years ago, I still get people in my comment section being like, hey, it's the guy that killed the, the, the Iron Man for the <laughs> fucking, but the thing, <laughs> like, it wasn't even like, I, it's obviously people are joking nowadays, but like, bro, people were mad at me, man. Like, people were so angry. I remember, um, a uh, guy called Autumn Elegy. I'm sure I'm, I'm sure you know who that yeah. is. He's like free to play. Iron Man. Bro, he was absolutely furious at me. He was in the comment <laughs> section calling me like a degenerate. He was like, "You are literally like the scum of the <laughs> earth. Like you are the worst <laughs> person in the world." Like like he was fucking dude, He was going absolute ballistic at me, and I thought it was so hilarious. I went on you on to Google <laughs> and I just typed in famous Batman quote. And I just copy and pasted this like edgy fucking Batman quote about like tur I, I don't know, like some fucking like real cringe shit. And he took it straight, yeah. dead ass. He took it seriously. He replied to it and he was like, Oh, you think you're so edgy? And, and then like I checked a few days later, he deleted it. Cause it got him, bro. And he must have been like, Oh shit, it was a fucking Batman quote. <laughs> but yeah, I got I got fucking roasted for that, dude. And people like cancelled me over it. It wasn't cool. That's so like, stupid. But, but it, yeah. was, it was really dumb because here's the thing it's like i felt bad but i was pking at the time with my my mate who was a scouser from liverpool and i'm not gonna lie like he was gonna kill this kid like it was just we could have killed him slowly and made it painful for him or we just put him out of his misery and i knew that my friend wasn't <laughs> gonna get off of him like it was just like let's just get this out of the way and also it's like a one in 300 pet it is like, yeah, like one of like, the yeah. most common pets to get do you know what I mean? your excuses uh, yeah, for yeah, hell. Yeah, yeah. We, we got more hardcore <laughs> stuff to talk about, all right? Man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like stood there at fucking the gates of heaven trying to justify to the fucking all angel. Right. <laughs> oh, speaking of really, a bad uh, thing. Okay, now, now, now that uh, Rexy has forgone his uh, ability to ask origin question, it's time for me oh. to do it. All right. Can I? Can so, I? Can I add one thing to one this thing. subject? Because I actually have an interesting uh, fact here. Uh, I before yeah. I streamed, I. Uh, <laughs> Wait, yeah, I think it was, was it before I streamed. I think it was. It wasn't my like second hardcore. So it was. I started streaming when I was doing servers, I think. But like, it was before that. I was on my Dragon Warhammer grind. It was only like one spot to get to Dragon Warhammer back then, which was like the canyon, and it was always so packed. And I was like, well, I wonder if it's so packed, would people be killing them in PvP worlds? So <laughs> <laughs> I, I I actually checked. I was like, oh yeah, I was still BK back then, like pretty often, and Ooh. um. So I geared up my alt and I was like checking the location. We're seeing if there's people there because you could check like with the guards, like if there's anyone there at all. And uh, there were people doing it. So I kind of made it a habit of daily checking the shamans um, in a PvP world uh, to see if there's anyone killing them. I also got, I always got like some loot here and there. But one day there was something weird because I killed someone and I had no idea. But there was so much stuff on the ground. Like, holy shit, I just became like bang. <laughs> And apparently it was a UIM. Oh, and they shit. Had all idiot. their shit on them. And it was like oh negations and like anguish. Like a blow by. I'm like, holy shit. Because they lose everything. It doesn't, uh, they don't yeah, keep yeah, anything yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah. So, wait, really? They couldn't did even pick everything it? up. Wait, do they not keep their I, I like. I saw that free on Twitter. Items? I saw that on Twitter. They don't yeah, keep their, like, don't, they don't keep their most valuable free items. No, they don't. They lose everything. Oh. I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, shit. they get, if they, if they get PK'd by someone, yeah. Yeah. Right. Tom, That's what's why the they time, by the way? I want to segment this part maybe in the future. What's the time? <laughs> the time is 28 minutes, brother. All right. Yeah. That's good. All show. right. Okay. I think, I think it was like a top page uh, Ultimate Iron at the time. Like, yeah. uh, I think front page. Pretty sure. Pretty I, don't impressive I don't know who it was. I have no idea. It's, it's pretty bossy, impressive bro. you're able to kill him in that area, too. I mean, if he's got. I, I think gear. it's very easy because you just entangle them and the challenge will they jump can't on him. Do anything. <laughs> oh, I guess. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember, yeah. I remember when the lizards were. Where, where was it? You killed them in the swamp with like a crystal bow. Oh, yeah. Do you remember yeah, that, the dude? Method. I, I didn't do that, but I remember I went there on my regular 
my regular account once. I did one trip and I got the fucking Warhammer. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> it was like 200k or something. You filthy oh, degenerate. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, okay, it, was or, it was back when yeah. the Warhammer was like I think it was like 70 mil. Like oh, yeah. you know back then Those like it was cool. like it was a big item to have you know. All right, origin story time. So you've hinted that you've done some PKing and all that. So so how did it all start for you, man? Like before the the rise to hardcore masochism. Um, oh. uh, how did you do it? You know, what kind of play style were you when you first got into the game, and and like, how did you like, transform? You know, over time. Okay, so like from, actually like starting to play. Yeah, like from like a little little yeah. Caterpillar I think I was like a was like seven yeah. years old. I think when I started playing, my brother mm -hmm. got me uh, into RuneScape. Um, hell yeah. I basically started like kind of doing stuff for him. <laughs> he kind of used me to to, to like mind pure essence yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, pretty sure. Uh, yep. Aaron boy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, was. yeah. It's kind of like that. And uh, we did a lot of like mainly PKing, maybe like fire strike PKing and like Varrock, you know, like oh, <laughs> fire bolting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The good we stuff. We probably battled each other with. Yeah, most <laughs> <Fire Strike. laughs> likely. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait. I uh, was a big fan of like making pures and stuff like all the time, like making new accounts. It was kind of oh, kind of a lot, of a lot of fun for me. And uh, yeah, eventually, um, <clears throat> I got myself into OSRS. I kind of quit for a while when AOC came out. Um, I did do a little bit of PVMing at the end of like RS3, I guess, like uh, RS2. But I mainly did P PKing, honestly. Um, a lot of like uh, revenant caves, I believe, or was it revenant caves back then? I don't think it was. I think they just scattered around the wilderness. There was lava like... dragons. Oh wait, are you talking about OSRs or? My like wait. like back in the day, like yeah, yeah there, yeah, there, yeah. there was revenants. Sure. It was all it was all multi. I think there were, may have been a a little bit of single in there, but it was mostly multi, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, but like then OSRS came out. I was still like a kind of a PK back then. I think. Um, until like Chambers came out, I believe. Like before Chambers came out, I pretty much like the the extent of my PVM was like Team Bandos, basically. Uh, um, I think that's pretty much it. And apart from that, I did mostly PKing, like Derek PKing. Uh, I wasn't really a tri bidder at all. That only started like recently, I think, with like LMS. I started doing my first like tri bid fights and stuff. But um. Yeah, then I started um, doing some chambers, which was actually like, this was like big money back then because like Dexter Spray Scrolls were like 200 mil at the start and like 100 mil each. Everything was so um, good back then. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought I was like pretty good at it back then. It was, everyone, everyone, everyone was like using like Void. I was really shit actually, but like it seemed yeah, like I was, was good. Pretty shit. Yeah. <laughs> everybody was pretty bad. If you yeah, I it. think everyone's like really bad back then, but uh, yeah. Then I kind of made a hardcore for fun. Like, I think it was like, I was like doing chambers with my brother a lot. And um, he like kind of took his time sometimes. And I was like, kind of bored. Like, what do I do while waiting? You know, like I got a, got a scout ready. Uh, but uh, <laughs> we're not starting the radio. So I was, you know what? I'll just make a hardcore because I was like watching like foe do hard crime. And, and who was it? A friend, I think, did a lot of hard crime as well. Maybe Bodie, I'm not sure. But uh, I was like following these content creators a bit and I really enjoyed watching the videos. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> Let's just make a hard crime man and, and like kill some goblins or something. Like I didn't really take it seriously because the way I looked at Iron Man, I was like, how would you play Iron Man? Like, dude, it's so, it's so dumb. Like you're limiting yourself. Like, why would you even like start it? It makes, makes no sense. Like what? Just trade. Like, <laughs> come on, dude. <laughs> uh, so yeah. I really didn't like Iron Man at all, and I, but I really, I really liked Hardcore Iron Man because you know that risk of like, oh, you have to perform, you need to survive. That's kind of what like got me into it. And like the Iron Man was just, just it just came with it because there was no regular Hardcore Hardcore mode, I guess, like without the Iron Man attached to it. Um, so I just started playing it, played my free runes every day, um, to get some magic XP, and kind of went from there. Did all the free to play quests. And I was like, hey, you know what? This is kind of fun. I'm actually bonded it up mm -hmm. and started playing. And then I died to her like a market guard. But, you know, like, <laughs> but that's kind of how it started. And I started getting a lot better at PVM through the through the hardcore. So I got I got myself up to like Cerberus, started practicing on the alt, doing some kills. Um, and then I just kind of progressed like that. Oh, shit. So you're, you're like, now, we're, now we're here. You're like a born and bred hardcore Iron Man 
Like, yeah, it, you didn't even do much PVM before. Even no, playing. no, not at all. That's crazy. So, so like, you, you so whenever I would do PVM, like I would first do the content on an alt for the first time, basically, yeah. and then till I'm like confident, like, okay, I think I can do it on the hardcore now. So then I would switch. I but see. yeah, I had yeah. like no prior, prior experience to that. No, that's really cool because you must like go into it with a very different mentality. Like it must be. Yeah. Like I assume that when you play on your alt, you don't just troll and just be like, ah, fuck it, I'll die. Like you do your best to nah. survive. Yeah, like I treat it as as if I'm playing on the hardcore. Be like, okay, what what kind of strategy would I use here? Like, when would I eat food? Like stuff like that. Like that all kind of matters. Yeah, dude, I think you sound like ideal. By the way, like with everything you've said in your background to do like a PvP hardcore Iron Man, I think I think <laughs> you'd get on really well with that. The only mm. trouble is, is like it's just notoriously bad for streaming. So you, you'd, yeah. you'd yeah. have to, you'd have to sniped. like you'd have to get Always. the YouTube popping with it. But I think you'd be perfect yeah. for it, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, speaking of YouTube, you you did some. How is that going? How's the YouTube uh, being a you know hardcore yeah. uh, content exclusive? You know, it's uh it's interesting. Like I have one video that's very well received, which is the um, hard crime versus the wilderness video. I think it has like sixty three k views, which is kind of crazy. Like yeah, my YouTube crazy. size is like <laughs> nothing basically. Um, I did like some videos that were really like poorly, well, not even edited really. I barely did anything on those, but um, those were like Matri and two videos. Yeah. And this was like the first video that I like properly tried. Like I actually like tried to edit things. I was obviously like not very good at it yet, but I kind of learned through this whole video. And it's like a movie, basically. It's a one hour and forty one minute long video. Uh, nice. Yeah, that's really good. But, but to get sixty three thousand views on a video that's an hour and forty minutes on a YouTube channel yeah. with one point three k subs. It's, that's like fuck, that's like a viral sensation dude it's viral <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. Huge. that's actually yeah. huge like no joke that's fucking huge because like you gotta look yeah. at it as like people don't know who you are because there's so few mm -hmm. subscribers and the video is so yeah. long bro you never watch a long video from an account that you don't know like that's just yeah. something you don't do on youtube it's like the golden rule because you waste your time your, so, your, your yeah. name has been Transcended. told across the lands you know yeah i mean i have a, I have a big name. following on twitch and i have a decent following on Twitter as well, so that really helped out. I think I kind of got it going, and I think it, at some point it started off pretty slowish, and then I think it got recommended at some point. It really got like caught on, and like uh, the the average watch time per view is like actually nuts for how how long of a video it is. Like it really like it's really um, how do I say this? Like encouraging, I guess for me because. Like apparently I did a decent job at doing at making the video and it, it's pretty well received. Yeah. And I think Just the, the reason itself, why is it's so it's such a unique piece of content because how how often do you see a uh, hard grind and with like being that end game as well? Because like I have a lot of items on the account, I'm risking a lot of stuff. I'm like risking the whole account basically um, into the wilderness and doing the crazy shit like Scorpio and stuff. Because um, so what, if you don't know what the video is about, for those who haven't watched it. Um, it's basically me doing all the wilderness uh, combat, uh, the combat achievements with the warplay kills, the Vetion kills. So for the, um, I think it's up to the elite combat achievements. You have to do some wilderness kills, and that's pretty much what it's about. And getting the uh, achievement diary cape as well. So I do all these wilderness bosses in that video and how I go about it. And yeah, that's pretty much what it's about. And I think because it's so unique, not really anyone any other content creator has really provided any content on this that's probably why it did so well yeah for well, sure i, I think when sure. the new wilderness update comes out you making a part two <laughs> um oh. i mean i might have to because i think they might attach combat achievements to the new wilderness update probably. i'm kind of scared i won't lie because think... like what if they like add, add stuff to like the the wealthy stuff i don't know i think they're gonna keep it pretty simple uh, at least because like Vedion and like those bosses all they made you do was kill them a, a certain amount of times yeah right there was no like mechanic ones like oh face tank <laughs> you know like they didn't say yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah. dude yeah, that'd so be, you should be all right. i don't know man like so for the combat achievements like you're talking about like the wilderness diary is that what mm -hmm. you're saying no well, combat well there is there is combat achievements uh within the wilderness as well so like you have to kill 25 callistos <laughs> 25 Scorpio. Oh, those are so 30 easy. 30 or something. Bro, it was yeah. 50. 
It was like a, it was like a hundred when I did. Them. Yeah, no, like the only reason <laughs> I did combat achievements is because they lowered the amount like, uh, like such a ridiculous amount. Freaking Jagex. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. That's all good though. But yeah, as a hardcore, they they are very scary, like especially like Scorpia. Yeah. Oh my god, a hundred times out. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, it was fifty nah. or something, and they have to right? Yeah, for those. I think it was like oh, way more. It was like three hundred or something. I swear, like it was, it was ridiculous. Oh, like, yeah, it really yeah. put me off yeah, of doing them at all. I'm like, what's the point? I'm not gonna do that many. Like, <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. No, it's fine. It's fine that if they changed it, so be it. Yeah, you know? it doesn't really require any skill to kill it multiple times. I think, like, yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not very. Yeah, skill indicative. No. That's... That's for tell sure. us, um, tell us more about your PKing career. It just feels like if you okay. were, <laughs> if Iron Man and Hardcore never came out, you'd still be clapping ass. Ah, I probably would be. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I really like PKing. Like the PVP really like attracts me. Um, like uh, Crusader Talent actually did like some PVP stuff as well. Like uh, I think it's like a like a tournament kind of thing with content creators, and mm -hmm. I took part it part in it and. Uh, Reese kind of carried my ass and like came, kind of gave me like tips and like what to do and it was like pretty impressive like how I like did tanking and stuff because I was like getting focused because I was like the the non PK in a team so like they think I, they could kill me very easily but uh, I was doing pretty well like tanking All and that uh, PvP well it, like PvP yeah it, I mean it does it does matter though like I I'm used to having people on me like in multi and like drinking my brews like and right away I'm supposed to come eating when I need to like I kind of know what I'm doing when it comes to tanking. Um, and I think it really helps like that I have that background of like I'm pretty confident in the wilderness because I've been there many times and I've actually tanked PKers a lot and I'm like, don't like fighting so I'm pretty comfy with it yeah and I think it really like shows like how easily I go into the wilderness and how I'm not like that like shaky about it and scared like I've done one actual tank test on the, on the hardcore which was actually the current account I'm playing on but like Back then, it was still backup Andy, and it was like very low level. It was like 86 combat with like, I don't know what my gear was, like Fire Staff, Rune Kite Shooters. <laughs> and I was doing Venonatis um, with MSB, and I got hit by a, by a uh, singles clan. And um, they were like pretty much fully geared as well, like Zerkers and Pierce. And uh, so that was like the, the only tank test that I've really done, and I made it out with like. 11 HP or something, no food. Oh, um, my TV literally just ran out. There was a bolt coming in. I would have died, probably died to it. And <laughs> I, uh, I stayed somewhat cool. Like, like they kind of thought I was, I was using a uh, auto prayer switcher. Uh, they accused me of him. Like, oh no, no I didn't. Um, no, that's, but, uh, that's the that's the biggest compliment ever, man. Yeah, yeah, I was really. It is, yeah, it's yeah. very flattering, is it? Or when you do like last yeah, man really, standing, really flattered, yeah. you're playing like last yeah. man standing, and someone's like, "Nice scripts, bro," and it's like, "Mate, I'm literally yeah. streaming right now. Like, <laughs> you can come <laughs> and take a look if you want to." It's a big compliment. It's like, "Oh, thank you, dude. Appreciate it." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what uh, what are some of your biggest PKs? Let's hear some trophies. You know Ooh. that you've gotten through PvP. I mean, probably the UIM kill is probably like the biggest PK. I'd imagine. That. That's kind of uh, insane. Which is like over 100 mil, I think. So, um, that was pretty big. I've never really like done like, like I said, I've never really done proper tri breeding. So, I haven't really like gone like deep wilderness and gotten like a like a full set or something. So, I've never really bothered. Um, I've probably done like EGS smite or something. That's probably like, the, like back in the day, it was like a big deal, but like, uh, Difficult. I think I've PK'd like a, a, a bundle set or something once, which was pretty really? cool. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. That's sick. Man. If you ever want more YouTube views, just, just <laughs> PK in the wild on your hardcore like Torvesco. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, uh, maybe. Uh, man, they, what What do you think about, for me, for like the wilder, wilderness combat tasks, it feels like a bit mm -hmm. of a cop-out to make it about PVM. How do yeah. you think that the community would take it if they made it PK-related? Where it was like, I don't know, like get ten kills with such and such mm. or something like that. Do you think the Iron Man community well, would just like revolt? <laughs> I don't Actually, think it would. Actually, like it would it. make sense because uh, that that would be like more like the PvP uh, achievements, you know, like combat achievements mm. just more so means but, killing monsters. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah PvP, like, I mean, I, I get that. PvP but... is still combat though. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. But like when they say combat, they mean like combat with monsters, you know. Because they could, because like it's PVM skilling PVP, right? The so thing they the, just there is no PVP diary. I the guess. thing you that I totally would say is when yeah, you think when you think of the wilderness, though, it 
PVM doesn't come to mind like at all. It's oh, it's no, like a side it thing. It's like yeah, it's it, yeah exactly. You know, it, I think the Green Dragon bots. It's very yeah. like unimaginative. Like I loved it, bro. When they actually released the um, I'll tell you what they could do. They could make it to kill the Revenant boss. That would be a cool uh like combat thing to yeah. be honest. But yeah. like it was really funny when they brought out the Revenant boss because I know that PK has loved it. But like from mm, yeah. from the perspective of anybody who does PVM in the rest of the game, it's like any PVMer can look at the Revenant boss and see its mechanics and just be like, it is the most unimaginative dog shit boss. But it, it, no no but Excuse it works. Me? It works because PKers hate learning new shit, especially boss mechanics. Yeah. So it was like it was like perfect perfect for them. Like the marketing on that, like they hit it. Bang God, on. To all the J mods watching, dude. <laughs> they knew they had to do they knew they knew if oh, they gave it good perfect. mechanics, all of the PKs Those would complain. They'd all complain. Fantastic, bro. <laughs> it just oh, fucking dude. hits you with range and it just stands there. It just like fucking hits it's you with like, that's literally all it, it does. It freezes you and then a bro. little thing pops up and I don't know, there's a lot of murder potential, it's, bro. It's, and that's it's, all it's an actual embarrassment for PVM, I will no, say. No, it's literally <laughs> the best thing they've made for the wilderness ever. But that's oh, the, yeah, the, the, the thing is the fact that you're saying that means that they, they literally did a perfect job because they didn't yeah. upset PKers. Um, and PVMers don't give two shits about it because they actually have other bosses that are good to kill. So it's just like it's a win-win. Like I think I if they mind actually, if it was a little more skillful, but I feel like they're saving those mechanics for the. the I hope so, yeah. bro. I yeah. really hope. I hope that they do make the mechanics like that's my hope. I hope that when the uh, the P the PVP bosses Venonatus, Vet Young, etc., Callisto, when they et rework cetera. those, <laughs> Callisto, etc., but like uh, etc. Boss. Etc. When they when they rework that, I I really think it would be cool if they did. But I'm not gonna hold my breath on it because I think Jagex know that if they are to make it very complex, I don't know. Yeah. I, it just depends on what the I approach doubt, I doubt is. It would be. Yeah. It I think won't be they are. They were talking about like the little minions you got to kill from Venonatus, or they'll heal. Like there's there's things. There'll in be there some mechanics. Gotta... Yeah, yeah, there'll be some mechanics, but not like nothing you haven't seen. Remember, before, wieldy yeah. weapons are way better than regular weapons, right? So these bosses are going to be getting I mean, murdered fast. Like, like so it will probably be semi challenging. I I could see that. The potential mm -hmm. for it to be complex is there. So take Veteon for example. Veteon has his like thunder strike or whatever it is. You know where he like throws out like some thunder and you have to move, right? Like he plays the song I'm I'm <laughs> <laughs> wait isn't it like a pokemon pikachu move thunderstrike i'm not sure oh, but like bro, look at your background wait. you should know this shit <laughs> dude i don't know all but... pokemon behind oh, there yeah. i love my pokemon but but here's the thing like so it's a, it's really simple no, right? you... thunderstrike what the fuck dude no <laughs> Vet 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 yeah, has like yeah, that white shit that he throws at you yeah he has like a lightning bolt yeah he's got he's got like a lightning thing that he throws at you well they've put him into a room yeah. With tiles on the ground that looks kind of similar to the final boss phase of TOA, and it's like, you know, on the final boss phase of TO TOA when he goes crazy at the end, and it's like you have to move yeah. off the tiles that are highlighted. They could very easily do something like that. Yeah, definitely. I think that would be really cool. But I, I, I'd love it if they did that. If they actually like forced, like, here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. This is this is a real thought process here. They force PVMers into the wilderness to do things that they don't want to do. What about uh, but, okay. if they force like, PVPers to have to learn PVM mechanics, and, and that's like the flip, right. but they get a really cool update and it attracts PVMers to that piece of content. Yeah, Why yeah, not? but those kind of mechanics are not that hard. It's just they're more reactive mechanics. Bro, mate, you know, right? We gotta take Mint Mad. We gotta take Mint to TOA. Let's take him. We'll take him <laughs> there on a three hundred raid. Well, I'm we'll see how he gets Warren, on. Like the, I the can solo thing. a three hundred, Mister. All right, don't Wait, hey, don't at me out here, <laughs> dude. I haven't actually done TOA in like two months. What's the what's the thing called when it goes really fast with the tiles? What's it called? It's called fast tiles. In insanity. Insanity. Oh, Have you ever done insanity, Mint? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, sorry, I've done a couple times. Uh, <laughs> have you ever done uh, a bit? Okay. <laughs> Bruh, you can suck my insanity, alright? <laughs> that's my dude, that's my point. Like I think no, it no, would no, be no, great. No. He 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 will learn how to dodge it pretty pretty uh, it's a it's a reflexive right, it's a reflexive thing. I think right, I so. think that like, some mechanics are not reflexive. They just happen, so if you don't know when it happens, you're fucked. But like but like the warden, a lot of the attacks are just reflexive. You see it and then you just react to it. Right? Yeah. Like yeah. here, here, here's the thing though. Here's the thing. Like I would argue that P 
PKers on the most part, good PKers, people that are decent at PKing at like a high skill level, are actually very mechanical players. Like they could easily well, they know the timing. They know the ticks pretty well. Yeah, they know ticks yeah. perfectly. So it's like if you throw yeah. them into a scenario, like a PVM scenario, I don't I know that they don't go willingly unless they need something like an Inferno cape. And you see people yeah. that have never done PVM that are just pure PKers and they want the Inferno cape because the fire cape's newbie, right? And they just do it. Yeah. And they do it with I wouldn't say easily, but they do it like they take to it quick. It just takes like a few adjustments yeah. because they're mechanically minded and they're decent. So I think if Jagex were to make those boss layers and those boss fights, the new PvP bosses, if they actually made them mechanical, I think it would be really good for PKers. And I think that I think there's probably a lot of them out there that would be like, nah, fuck this dude. Like that sounds shit because we have to learn a little something. But I think in the long term mm, it would benefit yeah, nah, them. But those yeah. I, I think they'd like, enjoy dodging it. lightning. Like, I think dodging like the lightning is but it would be like, hilarious, yeah. like, bro, imagine it would if, be fun. Imagine if you've got, like, mm. a team, like, Mint Mad Cal takes his boys there, and they run into, they run into the Vettion room, and, like, half of them don't know what they're doing, and they stand on the tiles that are lightning, and they just get fucked. Like, it would I'm be great. a lot of kills, baby. Yeah, it would be, it'd be <laughs> so good. I, I, I'm actually so hyped for it. Mint, we need to do, um, one of, what was it we used to do? One hour Wednesdays, and we'd, like, rush multi reps. We should do ask. that get the solo mission you the squad yeah, bag yeah, yeah. like we did in rev caves and do the barrows thing on like bro let's do it think about it. that for sure that would be um, they're awesome. also using the same um uh boss creator or whatever like a new one for toa they're using that on the wilderness bosses too so it's like mm. the same oh. stuff they use yeah so okay. we should be in for a pretty good time we really should be that's and that's I actually super spear promising meta's coming back you, you just spear them into the lightning <laughs> I'll be free. That's quite promising, actually. That sounds really good, man. You might actually need to bring myth seeds when you PVM, so you can dodge lightning. If you're <laughs> get frozen, there's gonna be some crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh if god, yeah. yeah. I'll probably be the strat just freeze everybody. But are you yeah. getting back into PKing since we're talking about it now, dude? Are you are you mm. reviving the account? You got a bunch of Iron Men, just de-iron one of them. Yeah, true, true. I mean, I have an all that can perfectly do PKing, but uh it's interesting because, like, I've said a lot of times, like, if I die on this hardcore, I might honestly give PKing a go and uh, yeah, do yeah, take yeah, a brainly yeah. PKing just so I can, like, yeah, get a break from the from the account. I guess, like, I might probably come back to it because I've kind of already said, like, I'm not remaking after this one dies. Like, if it would die, um, I literally simply don't have the time for it. I'm, I'm back in uni right now, so uh, it's kind of kind of yeah. impossible for me to find the time. Like, I'm already struggling to find time to do, like any editing at all. But yeah. Yeah, I think I could actually give PvP a go if uh, if 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 I would actually down this one, which I hopefully don't. But converting, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, that's how we bro. take over okay. HC. We convert all the Iron Man to PvP. The counts, the counts getting stacked, bro. You know? Yeah, definitely. The all three: uh, Tebow, Scythe, Shadow, bro. Done. What is it? What is it you study then at uni? Um, software development currently. Oh, oh shit. you're making apps, yeah. dude. Yeah, From yeah, coding, yeah. Coding though. Yeah, oh, yeah. Solana. Let's go. No, yes, no, no. I don't think he's making those kind of software. <laughs> <Yes, sir. laughs> so wait, is, is there is there a potential for you applying for Jagex in the future? Is that what? Is that the long Maybe. term? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It's, they better uh, pay you well. <laughs> yeah, but if you're doing, it, it I mean, it's in the UK, so like I'd have to move, but. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it would be a very cool job, I think, to uh, to apply for. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I've only just started, so like I'm not that experienced yet, so I don't really know. Uh, Kind of yeah, direction what I, kind of avenues given. you got eh? yeah no best of luck on the studies though so what is it like was it actually like potentially working at jagex that made that course appealing to you or is it like you've done a little bit of that in your free time and you enjoy it like how did you come to the conclusion you wanted um, to study that mate i think in the like the back of my head it's like you know it has the potential of actually going that direction like actually applying to uh, work at jagex um so that always kind of been in the back of my head, but I wouldn't say it's like that's why I'm doing it because mm. I think I really shouldn't have that as my sole reason to to do the uh, yeah no it's more the realistic the study. Um, it's, it's yeah. like a backup right it's like if all else fails I will work at Jagex <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put it like that I wouldn't put it like that I'm gonna clip like, that and I'm sending it to every J mod on Twitter to <laughs> hot ash first yeah it's more like over. a dessert you know it's more like oh well if I can have the dessert I will yeah you know? dude Mutz Mutz yeah. is gonna go for RuneScape free and then you know if he doesn't get the one he'll go for old school afterwards like that's yeah, that's yeah, the deal. no 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 I think it'd be very cool uh, to work on old school 
uh, as a developer, like I think it'd be really sick. I don't think I'm anywhere near that um, just yet, though. Like it's a two-year major, so it's not that long. But um, yeah, I think at the end of it, I will definitely consider it. And yeah, if they if they'd like to have me, I'm definitely willing to to shoot my shot. Basically, I think it'd be really cool. But um, yeah. I'm definitely not putting all my eggs in that one basket. You know, like, yeah, yeah. I think I definitely shouldn't uh, just focus on that. I I can actually see you as a J mod. I I genuinely can. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've already right. spoken to uh, to Elena. She's like uh, mod mods when like I uh, you know maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's like get in. <laughs> like, okay. I mean, I do actually think that they're working relatively remotely nowadays. I. I I, sure. I think a lot of them still. Yeah, I you think... have to be in UK though. Like, you you still have to live home. in the UK. I think yeah. you do have to live in yeah. the okay. Because I remember speaking to a J mod a while back, and I remember they were saying that they were back in their might be Norway or somewhere yeah. that they lived, but they could oh. do fine like doing their work. But yeah, I, I think okay. with like the lifting. Of well, the no, but the thing is, they already had resi- They they now have residents in the UK though. So like, it's not like you can't mm-hmm. go, you know, work remotely somewhere else if you're already located in the UK. You have. You know what I mean, yeah. So. I think it's I think it's probably a lot more difficult nowadays though, like than back in the day because of Brexit. So I'm not yeah. really sure how easy it is to actually go there and work there. I'm not really yeah. sure. I think yeah, it might be a lot yeah. more difficult now than it was before. Yeah, I I think though if if you have like you know you've got a job that you're gonna be going to, I think you'd probably be okay. But I think mm-hmm. the complication there would be. Okay, so you would kind of have to get the green light from Jagex that you've got the position, yeah, my, but would they give to that stay. to you while yeah. knowing that you live in the Netherlands, right? Yeah, and it's like exactly. that, there's yeah. there's like a slight distance issue there, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, be, basically, bro, you just gotta <clears throat> show them like what you're capable of to the point that they're like, "Damn, all right, let's let's talk <laughs> you, up, you in here and all that stuff. bro, listen." Yeah. You know, you know for a yeah. fact that when you apply for Jagex, they ask you some goofy question like, "If you were a J mod right now, what would be a passion project you would work on?" And you mm. have my blessing if you want to use the whole dead hardcore Iron Man like Val- <laughs> museum. Oh, yeah, if you yeah, want, yeah, if yeah, you yeah. want to make, you can set <laughs> up bro. You write exclusive patent nice, extension. Nice. Dude, uh-huh. imagine, dude, imagine if they actually did that. Mutz would need like an entire like floor. It would have to be like the third level of the entire house area, just <laughs> filled with all the corpses of his dead. Bro, it'd be like a bro. It, <laughs> would, it, would, take, it. Bro, it would take five seconds to, to load the bro, house every time. Imagine, <laughs> imagine if they like made it. Mutz, oh, start Lord. working on this, bro. You get the job. Imagine if they made it so you could play like the final cutscene of how your character died. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. That would yeah, be like, like, you know, anti cheat, anti cheat for. <laughs> the last five seconds of the count death yeah dude that, 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 that would actually be hilarious like think about all the fucking iron men they just, they just be stood still Mate, like they, just getting dude, hit they, their just servers like run on dude their their servers are running hamsters bro it ain't gonna work dude speak, <laughs> speaking of that dude. servers what's yeah. stopping them from doing a death recap because that's i mean that'd be really good that's pretty cool yeah. i mean they probably need better servers that's what i can imagine like, or like yeah. at the end at the end of the raid you get like a uh, death recap of all the deaths if you want yeah. to It'd yeah, they need to upgrade TV. from hamster wheels to like actual, you know. Spe- like, speaking mm. of RuneScape servers, Mutz, um, and this is off, like a kind of off field question here, but where do you th- see the future of RuneScape heading? You know, example, maybe esports or taking more of a market share mm. on MMOs. Like, do you see us uh, surviving another five years? Where, where do you see RuneScape at? I honestly think RuneScape will die when we die, like, unironically. Like, <laughs> I don't think. <gasps> There's a lot of traffic of new players, so like I think it literally and the, the players aren't really go going away either, like very slowly maybe. So I really think like when we die, the RuneScape will eventually die unless they somehow pull the plug on the servers. But I cannot see them doing that. Like I think they want to just milk it as long as it's possible to milk. Yeah, we we basically yeah. need yeah we need a, either a Minecraft or like a Pokemon phenomenon where literally generations of kids is down to play this game because right now yeah. we have. Yeah. existing and returning players right but we get older yeah. and older and older but like the kids don't really pull through 
for mm-hmm. the for the for instance, yeah. they, they're just like they're like oh my god pokemon uh you know one and two or whatever <laughs> one and two, one and two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. they're out of like ideas so they're like okay next and ironically game, two, the next title i i think i maybe, think that... maybe we need like a kid's game yeah. for runescape or something yeah. like a kid's yeah. version i i think yeah. that's it i think that a big reason it, why old school runescape just, doesn't our see marketing new players. sucks cock dude that's well, literally dude, it I, I think i think the old school runescape like listen i'll say this like personally i love the graphics but it's i guess it's more of like a nostalgia thing i know for a fact boys. no see i disagree now because you have like rune light hd and all these hd stuff that can turn this game into like you know really really like it's still not now, the same I, as like you know, Fortnite, but, you know? like, yeah. yeah 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 but yeah but like but like you don't play minecraft because the graphics are realistic you know what i mean yeah. like right like it's not like pokemon uh graphics are like oh my god this is so realistic no pokemon yeah. graphics are still shit I think, I think right people shit, are conditioned. They're nah, think... they're still not that great, dude. Like, it's like, have you seen the latest game? Like, the fucking oh, yeah. environment is empty, bro. It's barren. They spent a year working on it, and then we, yeah, they complain. It's, I don't think graphics is the play. Uh, it's more so just MMOs. Like, they don't have that, you know, that marketing, man. We just don't have. Oh it, yeah, hundred, a hundred percent. Like the, the market's it, not fantastic, but the thing is, what I'm saying, right? Yeah, we just don't like, have it, man. At the end of the day, for for RuneScape to continue to thrive, like I I don't really see it as like a competition or yeah, an tangent, issue. Tangent, tangent. It's not really like an issue for if there's another side project at Jagex that's doing well. So for example, if RuneScape Free is killing it, I think that reflects well for old school RuneScape as well because it's like the company's making more money. It's like there's less pressure to make more money or whatever. It's like it, it benefits all of us, right? I could definitely see Jagex potentially like maybe expanding out making more of a modernized runescape themed game of sorts it wouldn't even necessarily need to be no, an you mean like making more cartoony i mean they could make a more yeah. cartoony version of runescape yeah. surely i mean like an like. app or something like a mobile app like like, like a mobile game yeah. here's the thing like when you look at like obviously Simple. like the most undisputed yeah. most popular mmo that has just been the king who knows when it's going to get taken over and i know that people hate it nowadays but it's world of warcraft now, if you go and speak yep. to anybody who mains World of Warcraft, where World of Warcraft is like their MMO, it's their baby, it's their RuneScape to them, they will literally laugh at RuneScape and just be like, I'm not playing that, look at it. And that's a lot of people that have that mindset. Sure. Like, it's not a small amount of people. Like, even, yeah, even, like, even people, like, one sec, even people, like, you go yeah. and watch, like, when Asmongold played RuneScape, he could appreciate that it was a fucking solid game and that there were a lot of really good, like, concepts and ideas. He liked the way that the game was ran. But even he knew all of that, which is a sign for a good game, and he couldn't commit to playing it because of the graphics. That speaks volumes to getting new players into the game when the graphics is, like, the most deterring factor about everything else, all the boxes are ticked. Like, that's that's yeah. genuinely, like... Uh, well, I mean, I don't like think a, we a need... Like, a gate stopping people I, I, in. To, okay, look, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, like... I guess we're, like, at at, at the yeah. whatever Dude, topic. Dude, Rice debate, Cup debate, versus yeah. Rakesy no, debate. Like, no, 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 but I'm, I'm saying, I'm <laughs> saying anyway. is... Oh, no, I'm saying is, like, uh, a review from someone else that plays MMO is not that relevant because world of warcraft is not even that hype of a game anymore no no no, no mmo is that hype anymore They're not, so yeah. asking for their opinion doesn't really matter so much because like the, the most popular games right that that has crazy longevity is things that are like minecraft that are like pokemon right they found a way to just keep rebranding their shit every year where new generations of kids will just constantly play right and i don't know i don't know exactly what the secret sauce is but they have that mmos yeah even even if you're you're getting an opinion from someone that plays a game that is you know uh more popular it's just not it's not the, the those games have the same issue as us is that yeah. we're just the same player base we're getting older yeah. yeah i mean it's like it's like an issue that you don't really okay truthfully it's an issue that we shouldn't really too worry about right this is more of like Food for thought, maybe in 20 years, yeah. what's up, right? But like, so food for thought, what happens in 20 years is that, like, if these MMOs, including WoW, you know, continues as we we are now, where occasionally uh, a player that used to play will come back, right? But then there's almost, like, no new players that comes back. So eventually, we'll, we will get, like, Mud set. We'll all get pretty damn old, and, and we probably can't sustain the player base anymore to keep it flourishing. But that, yeah, but yeah. that's in a long, long time, keep in mind. 
but the real question is do runescapers procreate and then have their kids play i don't think it's <laughs> well, probably not oh, so as you know as you as you as you know as a you know as a as someone that has been raised by their parents you, i think we all understand that like when we try to force kids to do something a lot of times it doesn't work not gaming you know I mean? yeah. not well, gaming i mean Maybe even gaming in gaming usually can, because even in gaming, your kids still have so much options, right? They're like, man, I want to play Minecraft with my friends. And then you're like, well, my dad tells me to RuneCraft. Like, you know, it's like still, I think we're going <laughs> to yeah. come into this issue that there, we can only replace so much with our own closest friends, right? Like, we need to get to a point where marketing for RuneScape is kind of like, you're going to play the next Pokemon game? You know, it's like that, right? You know how, like, every year you just get asked that question it's like why the hell do people expect me to play this game right it's just like it's gone to that point where for them it's like you know they, they don't really care about like you know us veterans right they're just like yo man we need to run this show ash gotta be 10 years old for this new generation of kids we need pokemon a b c d e f g out every two years or every year and you know what i mean they, they have yeah. this thing where they just have that like crazy turning power that they can probably I, just keep on going. I, I but we think, don't really ask, like, does Pokemon, will Pokemon live forever? A lot of people are like, yeah, this, like, probably, because they just keep, you know, churning out, like, this, this like, process that they have. But yeah, we yeah. don't have that, right? So I think a lot of games, it's just not even an MMO thing. I think it's just a lot of different types of games probably has this issue where how do you create, recreate the, the brand so, oft, uh, so often that you can, like, you yeah, know, I that, mean, like, I, I think right? I think you kind of so. answered the question yourself there, and what you said about yeah, it's uh, really difficult. It's how really difficult. how do you make like new players? Oh shit, dude! Someone just got world first Hydra lever in game. Jesus, damn! Fresh start rolls, they popping off. But like the answer to your question, I think is kids. Like you answered it yourself. Yeah, like we getting need kids. kids. Yeah, but I, but I, I, here's I the thing. This might sound like... I mean, like, not like us. Not like me having a kid. But like, all right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But what I'm saying is, it's like, if you can get kids involved in your IP, it's like, there's your fucking growth, dude. Like, the growth for kids... Like, that, that's why, like, movies, like Marvel movies, are so popular. I, I genuinely don't really enjoy Marvel movies because I feel like they're so watered down for children. Nowadays, like, I agree, bro. I agree. I, I'm, not, I'm not a massive fan, but there are, you know... Anyways, going on tangent... I think that you're right. I think that MMOs as a whole, like if you go and have a look at like all MMOs right now, it's like there are so many different business models. I watched a video recently and it was about like the top three MMOs. RuneScape was in the top three in terms of like, if you look at the charts, like where the player base is going, RuneScape is one of the three that is doing well. I, I think one of the other ones was uh, Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy. Um, yeah, I, I can't remember what the other it one was. It is a big game, apparently. It's huge. It, no, it is. It's but pretty never damn even big seen now. It. Dude, when, you've big, never man. seen it. Oh my god. Uh, it's it's no, all anime. See, you might enjoy it, actually. I think Rice would yo, love it, bro. The, the, funny, the funny thing Why? is... It's, it's, never it's all well, anime, girls. Is, we, bro, it's like bro, little fox ears and stuff like that. Like It's, you know... It's one of those. No wonder it's popular. <laughs> oh, we, we say it's pretty big relative to the MMO industry, right? But, but compared to like the mainstream games, it's not big, obviously. That's why you might have yeah, not yeah. heard of it. Yeah, right? yeah. Because like you have to actively look into the MMO circle Dude, thing. MMOs, right? MMOs for gaming is almost like it's like a dying genre. To be to be totally honest with you. And I know this this is really difficult, I think, for people who love MMOs to really grasp just how small and niche MMOs are versus like take take battle royales for example it, it's like the difference in players is staggering and, and i yeah, think that like with a, too. With a yeah. game like old school runescape I, I, I don't say this and i don't mean this in a negative way at all but i think that there is a very limited capacity for growth in terms of new players but i think what jagex could do is continue the business model they have which it's fucking fantastic, especially when you compare it to, like, World of Warcraft and their monetization. Dude, their graph for players is just plummeting because they're just pumping out MTX. That's all they do. Like, they're, they're literally yeah, milking that panic, horse. Bro. They're panicking, or, dude. They're panicking. Milking that cow, sorry, not the horse. They're fucking up <sighs> real bad. Like, Old School RuneScape's doing good, but what they could do, and I truly believe this, if Old School RuneScape or Jagex, let's say Jagex, the gaming company, it's like, if they want to continue to thrive as a gaming company it's like firstly old school runescape's doing good runescape free is the cash cow it is what it is have your your cash cow we get it leave old school runescape how it is but like if they wanted to get a new audience of players i think that they personally need to expand into some of like the really popular gaming um 
genres. So like Battle Royales, for example, uh, more modern graphics. Or maybe they could even just do like a remake of like old school RuneScape, but in like um God, what's it what's that new engine called? Uh that they're using Unreal for games. Engine. Un yeah, Unreal, Unreal Engine, yeah. Unreal Engine, yeah. Like imagine yeah. imagine just old school RuneScape, but Unreal Engine. It's like or something along those lines. I, I feel like that could potentially be a path that they could take. Because I, I feel yeah. like at the end of the day, how do you advertise a almost 20, 20 year old outdated graphical game and i love the graphics how, how do you advertise yeah. that to new players how do you get kids to play that it, it's really freaking difficult and, and like the like saying that you can use like hd on rune light is all good and all but it requires steps there's a process of getting mm. that it's like when you initially yeah, well, we need to in, get to that point i think it i think okay, it would be i get beneficial. what you're saying i think it would be right, beneficial. So, I, I think, I think good, what, yeah you got what you're saying though is like uh, MMOs are kind of dead, right? So, um, if RuneScape wants to grow, I feel like MMO has to be a new hype again. Like, if there is a new hype for MMOs, then RuneScape will probably thrive as well. Yes. So, mm -hmm. I think maybe it's the interest of like the general uh, gamers, which is currently like Battle Royale. I think is like the the big thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, if that shifts at some point, which it could happen, you know, know where it could, like, it, it could be like a new game that comes out, which is an MMO, and it gets a lot of attention, and people are going to start playing that game, and it's an MMO, so they currently see how, what an MMO is like, and they seem to like it, so they might quit that game and then go to RuneScape or something. Like, yeah, yeah. If if that if that changes, if that um, the mindset of like players, like what they prefer to play, so turns into an MMO, then that could all change. Yeah, and, yeah. Will, and Will Crick, let me just throw this in. Two me, MMOs yeah, that our viewers might want to check out that are upcoming, and I've been waiting for years myself. League of Legends, Riot are making an MMO. I've been waiting yeah. for that for years. I know the lore in Riot. I love the League of Legends world. They got there. They have and they, lore. The, bro, they have like endless money, and they also have products that have proven to work. You got Valorant. You got League of Legends. People talk yeah. shit about them all the time, but like, let's face the facts. They're wildly popular. <laughs> yeah. And, like, Riot Games have made fucking billions through selling skins and shit like that. Like, they have the money to back up a project. And if you follow yep. the League of Legends MMO world that they're making, it's genuinely so exciting because it's a case of, like, it's not wherever... They're never going to run out of money, but if they decide that the MMO just isn't good, they're just going to fucking bin it. So it's like there will be a final product that is worthy and another one to look out for is uh, an MMO coming out that's being worked on called uh, Ashes of Creation. Which oh, there, yeah, there's the a, a lot about that. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of like hype around that, and it'd be interesting to see if it lives up to the hype. It probably won't, because, let's be honest, like whatever does. But I think that it sounds quite promising. Sorry, right, wait, you so, go for it, dude. Yeah. You yeah, want to go? Cool. Man, you can say it. You can finish well, your piece. I really enjoy the conversation at the moment because Rexy said MMOs are dying, and then Mutt said if there's ever some sort of hype wave, maybe we'll see some action. And in the back of my mind, I kind of already know that MMOs are definitely pretty much dead in water. But the <laughs> future for MMOs is so bright when you're talking about blockchain and, and like trading your own items that you get and getting real value from that. And I feel like we're just so close to that. The, the thing is, I just don't think RuneScape would ever <laughs> do it. Um, but yeah, I could see MMOs coming back in a huge way when people can can own their own items, trade them freely, and just kind of like from one game to the next, just bring their items with them and their account or whatever. Who wouldn't want to do that? But that's kind of far in the future, and I I think it has nothing to do for Instagram. Yeah, I feel like yeah, I feel like that's a concept that's so alien to me. So I don't I don't. Have yeah, too we much won't go super in, far yeah. to that. I just wanted to bring it up because that could be maybe would be the next step of MMOs. Right, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, that, I think uh, you could see like people trying, experimenting with like that. You know, the futuristic. There's, a, there's MMOs stuff, out there yeah. that, that do that already, but they're just not really great, eh? Yeah, yeah. Kind of yeah. like yeah. Uh, what you would call like yeah. the mudscapes of these games. You know, the first <laughs> version of RuneScape. Yeah, they're they beta testing. Out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, I mean that's something to look out for for sure. Because like you know how it is, gaming it, it's very interconnected with other aspects of our life whether it's like real life currency or you know things like that it, it you know real world trading those things they're all heavily correlated so there there and might be is, something that's the biggest thing holding runescape yeah. back to is rwt so if there was a way for them to kind of squash that bug and also uh you know profit or maybe even grow on the side by having some sort of blockchain tech backing them up that would be probably solving a yeah, lot of issues you'll, right there. We'll, we'll, you'll be the first one to tell us you know if they I'll if you, there I'll is big know. moves no, on that I'll end but like from a more i think from a more traditional sense right um 
So we're you know you know admittingly MMO is kind of like you know a bit a bit washed up, but like there's other games lately that uh, that that are from a different sector. Like you heard of this game called Genshin Impact. That game is yeah. like blowing the fuck up because yeah. I think it, it it's very appealing to uh like kind of like the anime players like the eight especially yeah the an the anime esque like viewer players right a lot of those people. They kind of get got into it, and it's like borderline MMO, but not MMO at the same time, right? Because like there's this like ability to interconnect and and like do stuff with people a lot of the times, but it's not like MMO fully. Can you play but, it on mobile? But right? that game, it's very much like super popular nowadays, and it and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? It's just that scene. So I mean, it, if you're talking about remodeling, mobile, I think you can. No, it's computers. Computers. It's just PC, uh -huh. is it? I, I yeah, it's, I know it's computer 100. percent I don't know about yeah uh, mobile, but yeah. But either way, it's not exactly like an MMO, but like a lot of people kind of like the newer the newer gamers, they'll they they would think of Genshin Impact as kind of an MMO. It's, it's like because a, anime more of a is super popular. Gacha. It's the art yeah, style. It's like a gacha, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, they have like gacha format, but it's also like interactive online format. Like you know, you can do it, stuff with your friends. It is right, also riddled with MTX. Let's not forget that. And it's very yeah. No, that's what I'm win. saying. That's what like gacha is. That's win. what gacha. Is. Yeah, yeah. That's what. I don't know if it's pay to win, but it's it's oh, gacha heavy. Dude, it so is pay like to win. Rewards. It is yeah. pay to win, bro. But, I've been watching that game for like over a year now. Like that's not the point. The point is that it's like. It's like a new type of game model, right? Where it, it, it fuses traditional gacha pay to win elements with this MMO esque element to it, right? So, so like, I'm not saying they should, like, you know, a future RuneScape model should be to have more gacha. I'm just saying they have this, like, style of gameplay where it's super popular, you know, whether it's because of the anime or whether because it has good story or, or you know, good combat, whatever. They just have this element where it kind of feels like an MMO at times where a lot of people are just buying into it. They're buying into mm -hmm. this concept, right? And I'm not saying it's because of the gacha. I'm just saying it has that undeniably. Yeah. But, like, there's something there, and it's growing. It gets bigger and bigger every year. Yeah. I mean, see? there's something that maybe MMOs could look into in the future. Because, like, we, right now yeah. we have a traditional model mmo right because we're like one of the first mmos right like at this point we're like the og standard right and the og yeah. standard is pretty robust objectively if you look at it right um like for example uh, jagex has tried new 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 types of games and has failed whether or not that's poor leadership or whether or not that's just because they just don't know enough innovative ways to like make interesting things because they try car games they try like a bunch of other like uh mmo styles or whatever like the transformers universe or whatever they failed that they flopped it they realized they ain't spending money on <laughs> shit no more they're gonna shit. stick to runescape so like as far as we know uh jagex is really good at making runescape runes just exclusively runescape right so so can we go back to that transformers mmo well, hold on, wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> transformers I, like, mmo yeah, yeah, let me know on, more about that look, 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 we'll get into it but like i'm trying to like there's like two there's like two thoughts in my head right there's like the idea that Racy said uh, Jagex could make a newer version of RuneScape that's more appealing to the masses and market that. There's that approach. I think that's probably a safe approach. They can't really approach like a completely new game because they tried that. I feel like that's already a, you know, they've wasted so much millions of dollars already. They can't do it again. Mm -hmm. Right. The current model, like I said, it's pretty stable. Right. And, and our only flaw with that is that we just probably don't get enough complete new players to fill in the people that eventually... In, in a very long time well you know uh move on into the afterlife right so like we don't have that right so i feel like yeah may maybe they could repackage uh, a different version of runescape where it's like maybe more streamlined or, or maybe more cartoon friendly or you know or like maybe take some notes from a game like Genshin impact not not that i'm, I'm a, i play the game i just i i just know that it's a very popular game that has some mmo vibes to it and it's working right so like i you know hate to say it may maybe that would be the way to go. Like I don't, I don't mind yeah. the RuneScape that we have for the most part. It's robust. It'll last so, probably for at least another decade, no problem. Just yeah. we can't get new players. It's the issue, yeah. right? New new players. Not but, so you, what you're saying is yeah. we need a plug-in on RuneLight to make everyone anime. Dude, I actually <laughs> I think, think that I would think be that fucking be a huge. Re that would uh, actually it might, it be, might huge. be a rebrand. You know, that would be massive. Because like Final Fan, yeah, exactly. Because Final <laughs> Fantasy, the, the 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 current MMO of it, it's like 
pretty popping. It's pretty anime esque, you know. Like, and and it's just yeah. a growing genre, dude. It's I a growing think, genre. So I, I think you RuneScape jiggles, and what you do is you just charge another dollar. So you just yeah. taking that ten percent for the anime filler. <laughs> dude, by the way, I will say, listen, I I think I said that Genshin Impact is uh, pay to win, which it is. But I don't think that means that it's a bad game by any means. I think a game can be yeah, pay to yeah. win or pay for convenience, which is literally the same thing. But it can be a good game. I've watched that game for a long time, and I, I've seen a lot of people play it, and it looks like a decent game. Person, personal preference, not a massive fan of paying to win. Okay, oh, but like I, I think something you hit on there, dude. I, I think the art theme in Genshin Impact because it really is anime. I, I think that is actually a huge potential market oh, like seriously absolutely. because anime is just like the new thing like it's so popular i know ree's been watching it for 20 years but nowadays teenagers yeah. a lot of teenagers like if you go into school and ask kids like what they watch i can bro, almost guarantee they're watching is, anime bro anime club right now is probably popping bro anime like, wait what the fuck is anime <laughs> club <laughs> <laughs> you know, an anime club is like in schools, right? Mm. Like people have clubs. We never, we anime. never had anime club. We had chess. Yes. Exactly. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. That's, that's what I'm saying. It's because back when we were in school, anime was very like it wasn't mainstream. You know, like it's mainstream. I can't tell, yeah, I can't no. tell people I watch Naruto. You know, I'm yeah. just saying anime club now in school is probably like filled yeah. out, maxed out attendance, bro. They are probably hitting up every convention. You know, yeah. Like all the sports andies are like, yo, man, what show you guys? You know, tell me what show to watch. You know, <laughs> like it's like that now. I bet. Yeah. In, in my high school, bro, we literally had a kid every time we ran the mile. He would Naruto sprint the first half mile, right, <laughs> as fast as he could, and then just quickly lose wind and, and finish last every time. But that <laughs> first two minutes, he was just like, you know, the theme song in his head, the wind's blowing. He had a bowl cut. Just fucking shh. Yeah, the flute music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that flute music. The, but yeah, the, dude, like <laughs> anime, like the, here, here, here's the thing. Like, there's probably gonna be a lot of people that listen to this and they're like, fuck are these Cringy. guys talking about? We don't Cringy. want anime. Like, I think that it suits a certain genre. I like RuneScape it's is a many growing genre. Things. It is is a hugely yeah. growing and popular genre. And yeah, I think it's, that it's, it's only, unstoppable. It's only gonna get it. more and more popular because people like yeah. the art style and who doesn't like it looks good but like i i don't think that like put it this way if jagex were to just that would be such a risk for jagex to just be like hey boys you know what update thursday everything's gonna be anime-esque from now on like no, there's so the many game. they would have to remake yeah, the game it, it would 100%. it would have to i think as a rune light add -on, i boys. think that would work I think a rune light add-on would be great. I actually think that would be fun. I think there'd be people that would genuinely enjoy it. I don't know if it would like attract new players, but maybe like people that really like anime, maybe. I I don't know. I'm not sure. It's an interesting Yeah, thing. yeah. That I mean, that'd be like the next safest step because then it's not exactly a, a completely new game. It's just a a, a remodeling, yeah. a, a reimagining of RuneScape for a, a different audience, right? Yeah. Oh, oh by the way, like, sorry. I, I see games like Genshin constantly growing because it's just the more people that get into anime, for example, or like play games that are based on like you know inspired by anime or things yeah. like that. Then it's just. Uh, you I know, mean, the the last know. thing I'll say on Genshin Impact yeah. uh, regarding what you're talking about, they yeah. have had an endless promo promotion campaign. They have been paying content creators to play that game for years now. That's how I know about it. Like we're talking like two years plus. Pretty much oh, yeah. everybody who plays Genshin Impact is being dude, paid to so play. Much Are money, you bro. signed right now, Rixi? Like, do you guys? I like wish I was, dude. I'd love to run around Yo, as Kirby, like a little anime Kirby's character. Kirby's playing right now. Yeah, I know. Like, I was hey, watching bro, him play. We'll it. give you yeah. a couple grand. Just take a yeah. ten-minute segment yeah. of the podcast and just start talking. Oh, about boys, Genshin. Genshin Impact. If you want, if you want to sponsor us, like we'll fucking dress up as like French <laughs> maids. We'll yeah. play it right now. Like we'll, <laughs> we'll get that shit going. But but my point is, it's like, let's be honest, man. If you have your game permanently advertised to people it's obviously going to grow and, and like that's the thing with with old school runescape is like they do a, we spoke about this in the last last podcast they do occasional brand deals where they get content creators to play but it's not a permanently ongoing thing uh, and like a second question and thought here is how do you advertise a 20 year old game to people like what is the best market and strategy i think that what they've done traditionally <laughs> Yeah, I know. I think what they've done is okay because they 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 market they market the game as like this nostalgia thing. And like, if you ever watch the promotions from Jagex, it'd be like jump yeah, back into Gilinor, cut down trees, go oh, fishing again. Yeah. And it's I, too exclusive. It's I too think, exclusive. I understand. I, I think that it's not a bad way to do it. And from what I've heard from J Mods, it actually 
proves really well for results. So, like, I've heard that from the mouth of JMods. I don't know what a more yeah, modernized yeah. You think, alternative so version an is. An easy way to think about it is how much money can you put in? They can't put in too much, right? But, like, what have they found out to be the most effective with the little money that they can put in, right? Yeah. And that is obviously to just let... What? Content one, creators do their thing. Yo, basically. one last one last <laughs> thing that I will just say on Genshin Impact as well is that the Over game, next. like comparing <laughs> Genshin, it, if you compare Genshin <laughs> Impact <laughs> to old school RuneScape, it has only ever been advertised and paid people to play it. What I'm getting at is with old school RuneScape, there is a lot of organic growth where people have just wanted to play the game, and like you don't need to pay them to play. Whereas with Genshin Impact, if they were to just cut their campaign right now and say, Do you know what, we're done sponsoring people, I think if you were to see like a graph of players and new players returning, existing, etc., I, I think it would be staggering. I think like mm. if that information ever came out, like if they just cut their promotion, which is like a hundred percent the way they advertise their game and like that's just their model. And there's loads of games nowadays where that is just the business model, where it's just like pump it out as an advertisement as much as you can. It'd be interesting to see. It, it's yeah, hard to compare well, the two, like, I think. To, to be fair, like, so I, I think you came across a great point, which is about, a, you know, Ruski being a nostalgia game and then Genshin Impact being like a. Yo, Mutz, if you, you know, need to use a, the loot, go game. for it, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 My, yeah. Guy, my guy's over here, like, in classroom. Like, yeah. can, can I <laughs> go for yeah, a piss, Send dude. it, brother, man. Send it. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, Ray. Yeah, no. So you, you know, you made a point about RuneScape being a nostalgic game, yeah. And then Genshin Impact, you know, we've we've kind of agreed upon that it's it's based off a a popular growing concept that is, you know, like games based on like animation styles, right? Like, yeah, and all that, right? And like stories that are kind of like anime esque, right? Because like the game lore and stuff. I mean, honestly, every game's lore is kind of like anime esque. Like, you know, it kind of follows that conflict, you know, heroes and stuff. But like, yeah, that's a you know, it's a newer appealing concept, and it's like a newer game. So, so when you advertise the games, well, people are like, oh, it's a newer game, and it's like anime ass. I've seen plenty of animes at this point. I've seen like, you know, like that kind of like art style. They're just already so used to it. They probably won't feel like, oh, you know, missing. They, they don't. They probably won't feel alienated, right? But like old school RuneScape, just the name itself is like, damn, it's old school. Yeah, it's got old like, in the I, name. I'm not, I'm not a part of that, you know? I'm not really a part of that. And it's like, and then the yeah. art style's like, so I don't think it's the graphics that are bad. It's just the art style's too exclusive, right? They're just like, I'm just, like, the art style is like the game style, the look of it. It's just so alien to me, you know? I just don't, like, yeah. there's no, they feel like they're, they can't, they feel like if they fit, if they join, because it's all about fitting in, right? It's all about, like, you know, trying something that you already kind of feel like, oh, I'm a part of it, right? For a lot of new kids or teenagers, they're like, RuneScape? Like, yeah, you know, I'm looking at the graphics. You're like, uh, I don't know anything. Like, it just doesn't seem, you know what I mean? There's like no connection, right? They don't have any automatic connection. Old school RuneScape. Oh, God, it's old school. It's like, so like veterans, like people that used to play this game 20 years ago. Like, and then it's like, what's this art style? I don't know this art style. It's like, there's nothing. It's not, it's not realistic and it's not anime esque. You know, it's like, ooh, what do you yeah. go? It's not like Pokemon. You know, it's like, you know, it's like that, right? They 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 have nothing to connect to. Right? Yeah, I and then agree. you tell them like it's a progressive game. You spend hundreds of hours and get somewhere. And you're like, damn, I don't know about that one. You know, it's like it's hard. <laughs> so so we don't have that. We just, the game itself just doesn't have that general audience appeal, right? The general audience is like you have this growing, you know, brand of players that are like you know they prefer bursty games or they like anime style games. It's just RuneScape doesn't really have any of that. It just doesn't fit. Well, and it's yeah, old. I, it's, it's, it's a little different, in, though. Yeah, it's yeah. different. Or actually, so. you know what? Uh, go for it, Mutz. What do you got to say? Go ahead. Well, I, I think, like, back in the day, we weren't like, oh, we have to commit 100 hours, hours to this game at all. Like, it was very more Yeah, yeah, no, I think that's then. a weak point. So, I made a weak point. I made a weak point on that one. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. I think this, the way that we approach the game currently is very <laughs> much not in line with how... Um, how players are like new players, I guess, would be currently. Because back then, when we when we were new players, we were like, "Oh, this game is fun to play for like an hour or something." We don't really grind the game like we do now, right? Yeah, um, I, I played I think, a lot. Just I think that that kind of that feel that we had back then isn't really a thing of 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 the present. Like people yeah. don't like that kind of play style of a game where you just play for like an hour and make some progress or something like really like a casual playing. I think it's more that's not really appealing to 
do gamers anymore. Dude, that's a really good point. I, I think something that maybe we overlook a little bit, like I'll speak for my myself here personally, is I think one of the things that made old school RuneScape for me so attractive when I was a kid was my inability to play it for as long as I wanted to because we had limited internet back in those days. So the yeah. accessibility was a lot less. And also all of my friends went and played other games, but my computer was too bad to be able to play those games. So I, I think that there was an, an accessibility issue there. So it was like, here's a thing that I want to enjoy more. And I'm sure a lot of people fall into this category and it's like, well, I can't because I've got to go to school. Uh, the internet's not good enough to be able to fully enjoy this experience. And it's like, if you look at gaming nowadays, like it's so accessible to get online and, and like play whatever game it is you want. It's like, it's not difficult to go and buy yeah. like a pre-built gaming PC, pre-built gaming PCs. When I was a kid, that wasn't even a concept. It was like, I think there was like Alienware maybe, but but even back then it would have been like really shit. It would have maybe played like World of Warcraft at a decent standard, but like to today's standard, it's nothing. So I, yeah. I, I think that's something like RuneScape really like benefits and like it literally is surviving off of nostalgia in a big way. Because I, I think yeah. just straight and you're straight saying and honestly, it's the only thing we could run back in the days. Literally, <laughs> like, yeah. like, I think I think we can. I think, that I think we can expand. Apart. Yeah, it's a good. It honestly, I never thought about that. The technological restrictions of our time forced us into this MMO. <laughs> literally, and, yeah. it. So, uh, and, and, and I think we can expand upon it. Yeah, yeah sorry, I think go, we can go, expand go. upon that, right? Because if you think about it, that's just a part of exposure. I think that's what it is, right? Like back in the day, there really wasn't that many options in the first place, right? Whether you had limited yeah. computer, you know, you know, even if you had good computer, right? At the time, it's yeah, not like you had computer. that many. It's not like you had that many options. You were probably playing like World of Warcraft, or you might play RuneScape, right, or something like that, right? There just wasn't that many games back then, right? I think it's it's really it all comes down to exposure, right? Like for example, back in our day, anime was not something that was a thing, right? Like the idea of like you know uh eastern style base games like it's it's like unless it was only like pokemon right like that's all you had like pokemon and mario it, it wasn't really much to it right i think that's what it is it's just exposure now nowadays when you grow up as a kid guess what you are you're immediately exposed to games right you're immediately exposed to all the nintendo games you're immediately exposed to like minecraft all the you know battle royales all the mobas right but like you're never gonna get exposed to mmos right away it'll take a while right but like by that time you you hear about it it's too late you've already you know you've already like <laughs> developed your taste right yeah. it, you know what yeah. i mean exposure yeah. and taste right at this point in time if you're a kid you've you develop the taste pretty quick because you, you've already been exposed really quick yeah. no matter what you don't need to do a whole lot you'll you can't have, you can't run away from it Dude. see the thing is that's that i think that's why it's really hard nowadays is because the newer kids they already developed their tastes yep they've already been exposed early and RuneScape just isn't. It, we just don't make the cut. Our MMOs just doesn't really make that. Dude, it's too late. We I, reached it too too late. I it's think kind of the problem. Something so. else to like think about. This just like struck me. This is this might sound. Yeah. This is kind of interesting just to think about. Yeah. I don't think that from like a younger person's perspective, the MMOs really seem that appealing in the grand scheme it's of not things. that it's bad you know no, it's not that it's bad it's so just, like ju just just from this there. angle specifically like think about this like when you look at like the king of mmorpgs for me personally like the head of mmos i think of like asmongold okay asmongold yeah, is yeah, like he, the dude pulls insane views he's a massive world of warcraft player he loves mmos it's his lifestyle but look at him as a lifestyle it's like that is the front fucking page for MMOs. Is some dude that is like got a few fucking hairs left on his head. The, like he he's like a fucking scarecrow. He eats fast food all day. He doesn't really like. And hey, listen, I love he Asmongold. Clean his room, I love man. him. Man he doesn't clean his room. He's got fucking rats uh, in the house. There's roaches everywhere. The dude doesn't shower. Like it's not exactly yeah. a lifestyle that I think appeals to a lot of younger That's people. Yeah. And then compare that to like. The fucking gangsters that are playing Call of Duty that are in fucking phase and they're <laughs> driving Lamborghinis and with all the bad bitches. It's like I imagine the younger generation are gonna look at that and be like, "Yeah, I'd rather be the fucking dude with the sports car versus the dude in his mum's house with a few hairs left, like clinching on for dear life." And hey, listen, I love I love Zach. I love his content. I think there's some like, points. 
I, I, I think, think, for, I think for younger that. people, boys, I don't think they look at Asmongold and think, well, I want to aspire to be like that. But I, I, I don't think so. Hey, look, but you, but you can't help but be entertained by his style, right? Because, like, yes. well, th I'm not saying that's, like, a strong point or whatever, but, I, I, yeah, I think all in all, it's just, like, you know, for the newer people, we just don't, they just don't. They've already have a taste, you know. They already know what they like. Yeah, well, they because like, they've they already like, been exposed. They you like know? Fast, they've already been exposed. Yeah, they like fast it's progression. Like... Um, I would say, you know, I would say that there is an element of like the graphics that younger people definitely enjoy. I think progression is a huge thing, and I think, I think that progression is big. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think as well. Like to touch back on the fact that like we couldn't play much RuneScape when we were kids. I think that what that did was it actually made us, and whether you thought about this or not, I think that psychologically it made us hungry to be able to experience the game more and understand it because we were all so bad. So it's like, we've always had this thing where it's like, Old School RuneScape is that terribly difficult game and I want to conquer that game and fully understand it. Whereas like kids today don't really have that because there's more accessibility. They yeah. don't really need so, to yeah. face those like harsh you know those harsh environments of trying to understand the difficult game because any game that is successful in 2022 for kids it's like fucking follow the massive yellow arrow that just points you everywhere <laughs> do you know what i mean it's it, like that's just not runescape yeah it. yeah yeah like uh, you know all of this is just psychology right it's it's just about uh human behavior and all that stuff because you know like exposure and stuff like that uh, I I could refine it even more because it's 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 like we're we're just creatures of habit, right? You know, for us, right? We were exposed to RuneScape, and it became kind of like our, kind of like one of our preferred styles of playing a game, right? Yeah. And uh, and fortunately and unfortunately is that once you're in it, just like anything else, you're you're in it for good, right? It's yeah. You know <laughs> I mean, it's not like there's really no reason for us to be like, well, I rather I rather just do stuff that are bursty all the time, you know. Like we're we're like we've accepted the fact that we like long term progression. You know, if it takes us hours, so be it. You know, whereas like yep. uh, you know, if, if you're a kid now, you grow up, you're exposed to fast pace, right? Like pretty much everything is just fast pace. Everything yeah. can be done in an hour. So the thing is, it's the same for them. They they've you know they've accepted that right Un uh, unconsciously, and that's that's you know it's not like they're gonna understand why. It's just you know we're creatures of habit. Once you get into something, and you're like. And you get into it repetitively, you're you're in it. You're not gonna. You're probably just gonna keep that frame of mind for the rest of your life, right? Like old dogs yeah. don't learn new tricks, right? It's just how it is. Once you get into your teen years, playing bursty games, you're you're in it forever. You're you're probably gonna find it find it extremely extremely hard to change your preferred way of playing a game, right? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah. if you spend years playing battle royales and mobile games. It's going to be hard to get into RuneScape, even if your friend, your best friend told you to play it. They're going to be like, oh, I can't. It's just like, bro, I got I to gotta fish for an hour? Like, bro. You know, it's yeah, like, no, yeah. actually, it's 10 yeah, hours. It's too grindy like, for people. <laughs> 10 yeah. hours. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Yeah. So, See, that's the thing. It's that uh, they've already developed it. They, they've developed yeah, their yeah. play style. It's too late for them. Yeah, that's so, crazy, man. That's like a real psychological yeah. thing because it is. It, it is because it makes that me feel applies to everything, not gaming. Everything is life, right? Yeah, I, life. I'm just thinking Literally. like that makes me feel feel so old because there are so we many are... things from RuneScape <laughs> that I've learned and that I've applied to life. It, and I know that sounds yeah. like deeply philosophical, it's but it's true. It's, he, it, it's like truth. rule number one of RuneScape. It's like if you don't have patience, you're probably going to have a bad time. Right, it's like you have to Absolutely. be unbelievably patient. You have to be willing to wait for things. It's like you go to Barrows and you want to get a Barrows chest. Well, guess what? You're not going to get a drop on the first, the first one. Whereas, like that's a mentality that we've built over time that like the newer generations probably aren't been exposed to. What I will say about this entire conversation, by the way, I think that you could nip everything that we've said in like the last half an hour into a box, neatly present it to Jagex, and say, "Hey, <laughs> what you should actually take away from this is." really look out to your core players like it's nice to get yeah. new players but look after what you have because these people we make your fucking game and without us basically the game's dead and i i, tr I truly believe that it's if true it wasn't for us. I, I know i i understand agree because like unless you can somehow make a successful anime-esque like mmo rebrand runescape like you're no shot you need us yeah. you need us and I, and by the way some of our I, kids. Will, I will add to that <laughs> i think <laughs> the jagex have done a fucking great job so far but I think it's really important Absolutely, to remember yeah. that is the the core player base us, like not to sound like an entitled piece of shit, but we are actually what matters. It's true. We've debated this. Yeah, we, <laughs> we've, <laughs> we've concluded yeah, we've on that. <laughs> yeah.
all right true that dude this conversation's been awesome um we've been going now for a little bit i think by the way in the last podcast we uploaded people were commenting saying what's the word People wanted a word, oh, like because we always say Mutz. something during the podcast. Bro, oh, Mutz. the word? No, Mutz yeah. gets to pick the word. Right? Yeah, yeah, Mutz, Mutz, what, what, what's the word. the word for people to comment down below in the comment section, dude? They, they made it this um, far. Anglerfish. Yeah. Anglerfish. <laughs> That's so fast. Wow, I'm definitely like that. fishing that right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> and if they type this word, it. how much GP are you giving them, Mutz? I mean, you got what, nine, nine wow, ten accounts? The bribery. <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give them five mil. I'm wow! All right, you yeah. split amongst yourselves, okay? Five all divided by. But yeah. by the way, and I have rice will double it. All right, there we go. What? No, fifteen right. per maybe, angler, maybe. 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 I have I'll some. I have cash. some intel from the last podcast we did. So apparently, and I've kind of known this for a while. Fucking solo mission. As soon as we uploaded the last podcast, that dude had finished it. Like bang on, like however long the video was out for. Like he he watched it in one go. He loves loves the podcast. So I know. You filthy that creole. You're watching right now, my guy. So you know, <laughs> we watching so you. I know that you're watching right now, bro. I can I can feel your neck, the length, the presence. <laughs> so, it's there. Last ten minutes Ooh. of every podcast should be just neck jokes, just for him. It's yeah, we should. Yeah, hundred percent. Dude, he'll, he'll 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 He's be typing down below. Dude, he'll mascot. be sat there grinning right now with his deep like bellowing laugh, like ho ho ho, and he'd be like, <laughs> he'd be like old school RuneScape bingo in the comments. I can see it, bro. I can literally you have see like it. a green screen challenge with like a GP uh, prize and just have Solo uh, stand on a green screen and see how long they could stretch his neck through various <laughs> positions. <laughs> Jeez. Yo, okay though. No, I don't know. No, I wanna I do wanna say that our 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 like play style or oh, is is the video still going on by the way? Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, like our play <laughs> style, right, that we've developed mostly through, you know, our exposure to RuneScape at an early age. I feel like it's 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 so much more like I have, you know, bias, right? But like, whatever. I, I think I'm trying to be ob objective as possible. It's that this play style, I think it's, it's more helpful to us in our futures, right? Because I feel like, you know, the whole bursty attitude of getting things done, whether it's a video game or whether it's, you know, anything in life that you want. I feel like a lot of things in life, you just can't get it done f within an hour. It takes a lot of fucking practice and takes yeah, a lot of yeah. patience. I feel like yeah. we do have that, type of mentality where we can apply that across many things in our lives right so yeah. and and i think it's it's a much more sustainable way of living than than the whole like instant gratification you know i i feel like i feel like so much people are so unsatisfied it's a stretch i think we're, i'm stretching here but i feel a lot of people are very unsatisfied with their lives because they just need instant gratification mm -hmm. and they can't achieve you know what i mean it's yeah. like they have to constantly seek it because that's what they're I used to but for us man. we're like yeah, for us, it's like, yo, bro, I mean, if it takes two days a week, like, I'm good. Like, I, it's going to feel so freaking good when it's yeah. done, you know? I mean, you, like, you're I, right. I just work for it, right? You, like, I think that's really important. You too. can apply that right, to so. so many things, man. It's actually terrifying. Like, like talking about other, yeah. like, things in life where that would apply, right? It's like, look at dating. Yeah. Look at modernized dating. It's like you go onto an app, a dating app, like, take Tinder, and you dehumanize the people you're seeing on the screen. Yeah. And it, it, it it's yeah. just like it's become this thing which is like fast satisfaction. It, it's like people that are like using that all the time. And like speaking from my personal experience, like I, I think that that leads to a like not so good a path. Like it gives you a mentality yeah, yeah. that isn't Wait, necessarily healthy for. What are we talking about, real quick? Are we talking about like <laughs> we're, we're, we're talking about because they don't play RuneScape? Is that the we're talking about online dating yeah, right no, now, man? How's online yeah, dating yeah, going for you, man? We've expanded <laughs> now. Like I'm lonely as fuck. I'm gonna die alone. All right, <laughs> yeah, yo, <laughs> real quick. Like, let's not get too get psychological here. All right, man. Mint's yeah, been no, sat like, there for like, the last hour and a half, just swiping right with his cock the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> like the, the truth is, there's. The truth is, as a type of personality, like, inter uh, like, uh, you know, like how, how there's something similar, right, in each of us is that we we have this mentality that we can put in a lot of effort and time. People to would say we're old. Thing. That's how people would right? like generalize. Uh, generalize. I feel like I feel we're like old. the I feel like there's a generation of people our age that are not like us, right? They're just instant gratification Andes, you know. I feel like yeah, you know, there's not many of us actually that that can actually keep up the effort of being patient and working yeah, I think a lot of patience something. indeed yeah. yeah yeah there's i don't think there's many of us actually out there like that even people our age because not many people were exposed to runescape even back then right or or like 
things that that made you want to put in a lot of time or effort to achieve something right and it's kind of sad you know not not because like there's not that many people playing runescape it's just kind of sad that there's just a lot of people that cannot put in a lot of time and effort to achieve something right? yeah they bail halfway it, so or or they just want something fast dude yeah. i 100 percent agree i i think that yeah. it all comes down to a matter of perspective because i think there's a lot of young people that would hear you, you say that a lot of uh, a lot of young people would hear you say that and think i don't want his life like he's just spending all of his time doing this one thing why would i do that when i can have multiple girlfriends and i can play multiple games and i can hit it and i can quit it and i can just do this do that the opposite is fucking five women basically yeah it's the polar opposite dude it's the polar opposite (laughs) it's not really about risk anymore yeah Yeah, it's not about risk anymore it's not about risk anymore it's not about risk do not talk for all the runescapers holy no, shit. no no we're not talking Dude, about runescape you're, anymore bro we're you're like half about... listening to the conversation man the stop perception. checking your crypto <laughs> and get involved in the conversation <laughs> dude, dude i'm trying but you and rice are having such a fun time talking about yeah. like the runescaper no. yeah no no i'm saying we've we've expanded we've expanded upon that like like we're not talking about runescape anymore it's just more about like us as people you know but i will say devil's advocate i'm not patient at all so i don't know the fuck you guys are talking about that's because you're a pk you've got pk brain bro yeah no no no, no, no. (laughs) that's what that is Nah, man you you definitely have it maybe not as extreme but like you definitely have it like uh, dude i saw you doing arrows bro what, what you're saying is if we don't use a dating app we are patient (laughs) <laughs> he's not well, I, I, he's waiting for me to come out. He's using dating as an example. I'm, yeah, I'm using it as an yeah. example. That was an interesting, like, of how we've twist, got used. Though, yeah, yeah, we've we've got used to things being way more convenient, and also, yeah, yeah like, there's the dude, I could speak shit, about you know? like dating apps right, for fucking most hours. Most runescapers yeah. like Ditter order DoorDash. All right, we are so <laughs> convenient. I don't even want to talk about this shit. We are so like, please get this shit over here because I got to grind something. I don't want to move. Oh no, that's chair. fine. It's not like Depends. we don't do things for conveniency, right? It's just that we need dopamine. How we just is, need bro. dopamine like it's just a lot of people need dopamine fast right like yeah. like whether or not you order a doordash is i think that's a different sort of issue right well, we're like, about or convenience. non-issue man right. i i live I, would... I live in the middle of nowhere i there's no fucking food that i can get delivered to where i live mate i make sandwiches you just go to hunt, you know what i mean farms nearby just... yeah literally yeah. dude i gotta like go outside and try to find a wild boar to fucking spare and then i can have some yeah. bacon you know? Yeah, I'll just yeah. At this point, I'll let Musk, uh, you know, decide the rest of the the podcast or end it. <laughs> <I'll tell you. laughs> I've said too much already. I'm so. I'm but dude, I I actually do think it it raises an interesting question. What what I will say is I think that they've had to in some ways adapt that mentality, where like and I I think like to get real here for a second, it's a little bit sad. It's like if you look if you look at something like real estate, for example, it's like who doesn't want to own their own property and have a place to call home? And it's like the kids nowadays, it's like there are people our age that can't even get their own property, let alone kids in like 20 years, man. And like, will they be able to? I feel like there's like a deeper thing here where like they may actually just have to adapt this new mentality because otherwise they're going to be like forever disappointed. And it's like, just enjoy what you have while you have it or some. I, I I don't know. Like that's a what? whole different. Yeah, I feel like that's that. a that's that's a, a pretty deep extension. Yeah. Of like yeah of life at that point. It is. It is. You're, tra- you're talking about stereotypes, right? Now <laughs> you're talking about cultural stereotypes, which is a very different. The uh, I don't know if Mutz wants to entertain it. I, you know, like I wouldn't even. I, I think I'm done for 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 today. You know. <laughs> that's why I'm hitting them. <laughs> you hitting them vape pens a little too hard today, huh? I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think I made Racy worry I, about no, no. our cultural future. Dude, I think about I think God, about this man. stuff a lot, man. I I really do. I find yeah. it interesting. I think the only way to get mint engaged in this is if we gave him like a blunt right now. We got this man high and he could like chip in, but <laughs> it's like okay. knocked out, dude. He'd be knocked out. Like, I I am engaged and I do hear what you guys are saying, but then I also also hear some other shit and i'm like what the <laughs> fuck are these guys talking about <laughs> no, it's hard to take this real seriously but i understand it to a t the yes, yeah, yeah, game yeah. does give you fundamental skills that help you through yeah, yeah. most of the, the the things you're not prepared for. we're mostly, yeah, yeah. We're mostly See, talking about how times have forever, changed bro. i don't this think it makes hustling. us like better than like the adolescence man but then well, again, no, just i don't want to say yeah, like, nah. i i never wanted to <laughs> I never wanted to say that like we live a superior lifestyle or whatever. I, th- I don't think that's really the point. I just feel like I feel like a lot of the stability that comes from living such long life uh, compared to like a lot of other animals is that like it's that it's that like we we live a long time, right? If you think about it, so, so we spend kind of like every. Turtles. 
Yeah, but like if we spent every hour trying to hit that dopamine, I feel like a lot of people will crash because they're just gonna yeah. get burnt out, right? I feel like sustaining Bro. your 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 way of achieving dopamine in, in like more you know like long term manner is 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 ill you know ill ill lead to no proverb. Know, it'll, it'll have a bigger payoff. So like if yeah. you if you wait if you are patient enough <laughs> to wait. Then the eventual dopamine that you will receive will be yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Which way more satisfying than yeah. And if you get and it, also like, you'll you, you'll probably burn out less too because like imagine yeah. chasing dopamine every hour of your day like holy shit yes. I would be so exhausted dude, bro. dude. I'd be like I don't want to wake up <laughs> you know like I can't, you know you know like so, I so, think I I think I I feel that with a lot of my friends we like, haven't even to touched on we haven't even yeah. touched on like TikTok or like shorts for oh, example oh, like how, I, i'm spice, sure we're absolutely spice, all guilty of doing this where we've been let in bed or whatever a period of time and you've just started watching shorts and then yep fucking two hours later and you're like oh my god i've just wasted two hours and you're like get this yeah. away from me like what have i just done can, like genuinely put yourself in this position can you imagine it's terrible dude can it's you terrible. imagine having nothing to do and that is what you do for eight hours of your day, can you actually you imagine how that like would make you feel? Of our audience, did you dude, I, nah, dude, our <laughs> audience, dude, our <laughs> audience are watching a fucking two-hour podcast. Bro. They're watching a two-hour yeah, podcast. We're talking about, about dude. Really? This is a long-format podcast, dude. Our viewers are better than that. They don't watch fucking TikToks, dude. Oh, dude, they I don't know. watch yeah. TikToks, I mean, man. Like, my mom loves TikToks, by the way, dude. It's just the future. Only for ten minutes of my day. Okay. Yeah. And then I resisted. I'm like, I know. I, I, <laughs> dude, I don't even do it anymore. I literally, I get into bed. <laughs> I go on fucking eBay because it's boring. I'm and I look at boring time. stuff. <laughs> and then I'm just like, all right, I'm going to fucking bed. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I can't. It just engages the brain. But you're, you're totally right. I think that it will be really interesting to see what happens in the future, especially to kids that are growing up now. And also, I'll tell you this, like, Speaking of holding on to things long term and like being able to work towards something, like you're you're basically painting a perfect picture and scenario of what you'd call like traditional investing, of like having an asset, holding it for long term, sure. and seeing long term value like returns on it, right? Returns on your investment down the line. And, and here's right, the thing: all right, <laughs> that's that's a genuine concept that I think may become foreign over time. Like the younger generations might completely struggle with that like that might just not be a thing they already are bro well they you know are. why you know why everyone struggles with that and you, you got to learn it from runescape is because why the fuck would they want to teach you things that help you in life right that's a real yeah. subject but right who are there. they Public who are we talking hey, about people are out for themselves uh, man you know dude, right, man. i don't like you weird but they're not teaching <laughs> fundamental skills in schools man let's be real they're not they don't teach no, survival skills survival they don't teach uh literally no one taught me about trading or stocks or anything yeah, no, or how to start yeah, right. Any of that shit in high school, not even in college. They do not prepare anybody to do anything. You have to go outside of your own means and they don't even tell you to do that either. Right. And it's so easy. Yeah, to they, they don't really teach you to be in innovative, to be honest, because they I think that's what school is. Right. It's it's the standardization that, you know, it has its pros and cons. The pros is that, like, if you follow it to a T, you'll probably be in the workforce. But if you don't follow it to a T and you don't like it, then it's like, um. You're kind of fucked unless you out you innovate yourself, right? It's and it's that's kind of what we did, in my yeah. opinion. Just because, yeah. like, if you look at private schools versus public, those private kids are learning so much. I mean, they're learning way more than you could be, right? And then you go to a public school, and everyone's got to fit the same mold. They don't teach you about anything you need for a future. I think maybe one class I saw practice for interviews because they were wearing suits one day. That is it. I wasn't I mean, even in that class because they didn't tell me about I, that shit. I think yeah, there's partial yeah, truth yeah, to the what truth you say. Is if, if, if schools taught everyone how to like be, be street smarts, it'll be too competitive, right? It's like, that's kind of what it is. Nah, it's a way to, they want it, you to think, no, it's bro. a sad way to filter <laughs> out. No, no, the truth is though, it's a sad way to filter out you survival, right? It, it's, it is. That's that it, it's the pros and cons, man. I mean, you get security, you, dude, I, yeah, but you yeah, don't really get that. Rice cup, I agree, dude. I, I think you know, I think they that, give yeah. you the necessity. I agree with you, man. I do agree. That's what I'm saying in a different way. You know? But yeah, like yeah. Mint, you're not wrong, bro. Like you're right. School is definitely no, not, like not where it could I'm right. be. I'm not getting debated. I'm just like yeah, saying yeah, yeah, straight yeah. up. Like I agree I, with Rice I agree in with a way, you. but that's like a cruel way to say it. It's like it is cruel. I I I'd rather be objective. Cruel on purpose is what I'm saying. That's my whole point. It's like they make it cruel on purpose. I feel like some of I believe it should be. 
but that's mm-hmm. the way it is. So I, I don't mean, think it's right, I, but dude, I do acknowledge it's exactly how it is. Here, here, yeah. Here's just like a little perspective for you real quick. Yeah. It's like anybody that goes to like a public school, and I'm assuming we all did, unless Mutz is a secret billionaire and we don't know about it. <laughs> do no, we know about it? Probably not. Okay. Yeah. So like, here, here's something to think about. It's like, at the end of the day, who are your teachers? They're people that are being paid like most of the time, not very much, and a lot of the time they're underpaid. So you're being taught skills by somebody who may not be the best. And I'm, there's nothing against being a teacher. I think being a teacher is fucking fantastic. I think that you're doing a great thing. I've had thing. a few like real. Yes, know, real I, I, think, I think I think throughout your lifetime, if you're lucky, there will be a few teachers and individuals, tutors or whatever, that will real like t- teach you some real fucking life lessons. But at the end of the day. There are a lot of teachers that are just out there that unfortunately they're not in the position to really teach you about being financially, you know, well off because they're not living that. Like they're they're literally earning like a, not the best of living wage as it is. They're probably not the best people that are clued up on that subject. So you're totally right. Like you're not taught the, the key essentials, but I think what they do, they probably try and teach you like a base fundamental, like you know, like a baseline of like, if you follow this, you won't be homeless and you will be able to eat food and hopefully have a roof over your head. And that's like the bare minimum. And then it's kind of like, well, it's on you to figure out the rest. But uh, everyone's got like very strong it's opinions the, on this. The, the schooling system is based on like a, a, a well-rounded person. So they cover these like things that don't really matter IRL and a lot of these classes like mitochondria power the cell, right? It's, it's a very standardized, uh, knowledge base that these teachers are giving so whether the teacher's good or bad they're not going to give you the right info to su- succeed either way unless they're going above and beyond which is like i said kind of rare right some teachers will it's sit rare. you down and tell you how to succeed and tell you what to look for most won't but that's not really their problem it's the whole reason in general like the whole building the school the public system that's what's fucking everything dude like i said you go to a private school they will teach you what you need to succeed and they will tell you how to do it and they will tell you about networking. I'm sure no one here learned about networking in public school. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but, 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 but one of the main things about going to a public school is that you're surrounded by other people that you literally network with. It, it's like, for example, like, well, you, you have go, to think about it. Wrong, yeah, yeah. It gets you, you ready that out, yeah, yeah. for that environment, but they do not tell you to network, right? It's like, like when, but it's natural. The rice, it, like it's the, just natural, the, isn't it? It's like becoming we friends. get to the top, but not everyone does, right? It's, yeah, that's you have to innovate thing. yourself. I, mm-hmm. I feel like I had to innovate a lot myself, but also had some teachers that were really insightful, you know? Yeah. A Whereas few, a few. Private like, school, uh, they will tell you that, that networking is the key, and they will, like, it's big. It's big there. It's huge. So I, I, probably because of like secondary school, right? For my like, I have, we use very different terms, so like, I don't really know. Uh, oh yeah, it's where you pay to send your kid to school, pretty much. Instead of having the right. government do it, they go through another means because they don't want public education because they know it's yeah. Right. Yeah, basically, the more wealthy people, they like to align themselves in institutions that they're they have more mm-hmm. influence over. You know, it's kind of yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. You know, nepotism. It's like a third degree nepotism you know kind of thing from the right? start we were fucked, make it in you make it in you... yeah it's because like that's how it is we are selfish right like, I, hey once I will we have say, something we kind of want to take care of ourselves I, and the people around us not the people outside they're like you can get out i know? think there are Wait. definitely some benefits to go into a private school i think that the general level of education you're going to get and attention uh people to people or people to people is going to be more than your you're generic more secondary you know, school. You're, yeah. But you're more I, I, dude, you're just it doesn't, the you need it to does learn, not guarantee success. I know people that went to yeah. private schools, man, and like they're flipping burgers. It doesn't guarantee success. Yeah, at it's all. not guaranteed. No, it's not. not it's all. There. It's all on you, bro. Like you could, if you've got money, you can go to private school. But it's like you got to do the rest, man. Like you could send anyone to a private school. It doesn't mean they're going to be a fucking Einstein or success, well, but it might mean that they have a better bro. chance of it. You know, because I I completely agree. It is up to you to succeed, but there is such an easier way to succeed if you're in a school that's teaching you what you need to know instead of figuring that shit out yourselves. Um, yeah, and yeah, for sure, people go to private school and they flunk and they fuck up. It's probably because they got yep. rich parents and they don't have really any motivation. So th- that's I not think... what I'm arguing. I'm just arguing that a uh, public school does not give you what you need. And yeah. uh, if you succeeded out of public school, then congratulations, you're with us. You know, we're out here. And if you didn't, fuck, man, it, it hurts. I mean, Min, I would yeah. class you as a success, bro. To be honest with you, like, 
it's like you will literally have your own business you're working for yourself nobody tells you what to fucking do except from us when we tell you to get her on time like i'd say you're doing pretty wait, well wait, for yourself. Wait, wait a minute you just thank you He's usually <laughs> first. Nice yeah, he's usually no. Wait, usually who is mint, it? mint on time. By the way, usually he's yeah. I was first. late today. I was late. But hey, listen, <laughs> boys. To end the podcast, I will leave you with a little bit of wisdom and something that will make you successful over time. And Ooh. that would be this right here. If any of you guys want to take that, take it as you will. Uh, I I'll think take that... it where you live. <laughs> <laughs> I think on that note, what we should do, Mutz, my boy. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about before we end this? Nah, not really. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, Dude, nah, I'm glad we, we dedicated the first hour to Mutz's uh, you know, stuff. <laughs> yeah. The second hour is all about hell uh, yeah. lifestyle. No, no, that's important. I, I feel like people <laughs> are, uh, will be hopefully satisfied. <laughs> By the way, I would yeah. like to I'd like to give just a, a quick shout out to uh, Lil French, who is uh, the guy who's been doing our timestamps for us on the podcast. So, oh, what a homie. big shout out to you, bro. Thank nice. you very much you for doing that. Better timestamp the shout out. <laughs> dude he can plug he can plug his youtube or something but yeah dude much yes. it's been a pleasure man we're gonna put all of your information down below boys who are watching please go and check him out and uh what was the word again for the video was it anglerfish, anglerfish he said angler comment yeah. anglerfish leave a like on the video it's so important and subscribe that'd be awesome